high pressure scent god bless you you're welcome to the fourth month the month of april genesis chapter one and speaking from verse one the bible said and god said in the beginning let there be light this is the beginning of the month of april i don't know what your expectation from god must have been but one thing is certain is that there is a beginning to everything this month beginning is a beginning for you a new season it's a beginning for you a new open door it's a beginning for you a new phase a new chapter of your life it's a beginning of your new encounters with god it's a beginning where all things were passed away and all things are made new all things are made fresh all things are made to come alive because the word of the lord will be breathed upon it the word of the lord will hit every aspect of your life and absolutely bring them back to life i don't know what has been dead in your life i don't know what has been stagnant i don't know what has been dormant in your life there is a beginning and surely this is the beginning of restoration for you stay tuned and watch as the word of the lord comes to us on this platform reflector hub tv via the mouth of his servant apostle joshua selman god bless you so much stay tuned and get blessed
Jesus, ask him for an encounter tonight. Lord, give me an encounter. Let everything that has died, everything dying in my life, let it come back to life. Let it experience the resurrection power of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Spirit of the living God, we ask you to help us, grant us understanding, grant us impartation, let our faith be built. I pray tonight that you will visit us in a mighty way and let Jesus be glorified in our midst. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Happy Easter to everyone. It's a joy to once again celebrate this moment. And um, Azaria family is connecting blessings to all of you and then to our global family. Let's give them a big, big God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, there's all kinds of arguments whether Easter should be celebrated or not. Um, as a ritual, 
it's not necessary but with understanding there is no problem celebrating Easter it is a commemoration I wrote here and a celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead but more importantly celebrating the consequent victory that we now have access to we're not only celebrating the story that culminates in his resurrection and ascension we're also celebrating the consequent victory that we now have access to that the victory of the believer is today predicated upon what we know and call the finished work of Christ um, we have a lot to discuss on this wise and I trust that we'll just get to work immediately I trust to share with us a few things that would strengthen our faith and make this season very meaningful to our lives and help our overall walk with God hallelujah please write this down I wrote here that the victory of the believer the victory of the believer depends on his understanding of the finished work of Christ the victory of the believer very powerful points to note as we begin tonight that the victory of the believer is not dependent on sentiments it's not dependent on some kind of superstitious wishes the victory of the believer in this kingdom here and now is absolutely dependent on his understanding of the finished work of Christ I'm not done but pause and let me explain that statement notice I never said the victory of the believer is dependent on the finished work of Christ no the victory of the believer is dependent on his understanding of the finished work of Christ as you will be learning the finished work of Christ as potent and as powerful as it is will continue to remain barren in the life of a believer until activated by superior spiritual understanding so the victory of the believer depends on his understanding of the finished work of Christ alongside the dynamics of appropriating the advantage it brings here and now alongside the dynamics of appropriating the advantage that that victory has brought here and now so we're discussing two things already that number one the victory of the believer depends on his understanding of the finished work of Christ but it also depends on his or her ability to understand the dynamics of appropriating the advantage in truth there is um, every kind of advantage you can imagine is captured in the finished work of Christ but it does not mean that we will come into the experience of it arbitrarily we must have an understanding of the finished work of Christ but we must also know the dynamics of appropriating that advantage to our lives here and now are we together generally speaking the Christian faith and and I want you to really really listen I took time to study this um, hoping and trusting that God will use it to bless us tonight generally speaking the Christian faith now let's do a little Bible study um, the Christian faith is broadly divided into five areas or five aspects the entire span of the Christian faith is divided broadly into five areas number one please write for your knowledge number one the revelation of God alongside his eternal plan please write that generally speaking the Christian faith is divided into these five areas that means you are not a Christian truly until you know and you understand these five areas they could be further broken into many aspects but theologically speaking the entire span of the Christian faith is broken into these five areas number one the revelation of God alongside his eternal plan please write that down that is number one 
So the Bible begins by giving us a revelation of God. God and then his eternal plan. You find that in Genesis 1 verse 1, in the beginning, God. You find that in John 1 verse 1, in the beginning, God was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So you see that the Bible begins by giving us an understanding about God. When you read Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 11, still buttressing on that point, 3 from verse 7. Let's start from verse 7. The Bible says, Wherefore I was made a minister, Paul is speaking now unto the church in Ephesus, according to the gift of the grace of God, given to me by the effectual working of his power. We're reading to 11. It says, Unto me, whom I am less than the least of all the saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Verse 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. He's talking about God now to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God so the first thing you have to understand is that the Bible begins with God the Bible does not begin with an idea the Bible does not begin with a principle the Bible does not begin with a formula the Bible begins with a person God and the Bible takes time to meticulously talk about the might and the all-surpassing power of this God alongside the fact that he has in his mind an eternal plan are we together one more scripture Isaiah 46 and verse 10 the Bible tells us how consistent the eternal plan of God is it says declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure so the Bible begins with the revelation of God alongside his eternal plan can I continue Number two, the Bible now talks of the creation and the fall of man. This is the second aspect of the Christian faith. You must understand the creation and the fall of man. Very clearly in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, the Bible tells us, Paul speaking by the Spirit, 3.23, it says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. For all have sinned. All have sinned. It's a tragedy that has come upon all men by reason of our being in Adam. By one man's sin, everyone was affected. Are we together? The creation of man. It is important in theology we call it anthropology from the word anthropos I've taught you here understanding man the entire span of man not just from a scientific or archaeological standpoint but man as the zenith of God's creation are we together now the Bible seems to focus everything on earth as far as God's creation is concerned the zenith of God's creativity and power was invested in the creation of man. Genesis 1 26, the Bible says, and God said, let us make man, is the Greek word Eloha, the plural, the plural now, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion. Hallelujah. So you have to understand the story of the creation of man down to the fall of man you may want to make reference to our teaching let them have dominion we've done a sound exegesis of scripture as far as the creation of man and the fall of man is concerned so take note the first aspect of the christian faith is the revelation of god alongside his eternal plan number two the whole journey from the creation of man down to the fall of man number three very quickly is the revelation of jesus christ 
the third aspect of the christian faith is the revelation of jesus christ from genesis 3 after man fell every other thing that happened until the gospel was only midwifing the arrival of jesus it's important that you understand this you can literally summarize the bible and you are not you you may not be accurate like i taught you last week but then contextually speaking from genesis 3 the most important topic to discuss after Genesis 3 was the incarnation and the arrival of the Christ. Everything from the minor prophets, the major prophets, the journey of the nation of Israel was only helping us to appreciate the processes that would finally lead to the arrival of Jesus Christ. So the third aspect of the believer's experience, the faith life, is the revelation of Jesus. This is not only the third, but in order of priority, this is the most important revelation as far as the Christian experience is concerned. Because everything that we celebrate today and that gives the believer the basis for victory is predicated upon this revelation. Are we together? John chapter 1, let's read 1 to 5 very quickly, then we'll jump to verse 9. We're doing a little Bible study. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Reading to 5, it says, the same was in the beginning with God. Now, John is introducing the Word very intelligently. You would notice theologically speaking, like I have taught you, that the, the synoptic gospels were approached from different standpoints. Others took it from a historic standpoint. Others took it from an archaeological standpoint. It was only John that began his discourse from the divinity of the Christ. Are we together now? So he says, all things were made by him and outside of him was not anything made that was made. Verse 4 says, in him, the him being the word, was life, and the life was the light of men. Then it says, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Please jump to verse 9 for sake of time. The Bible says, that was the true light. The same word again, that lighted every man that cometh to the world. 10. Let's continue. We're reading. It says, he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. Verse 11, it says, he came to his own and his own received him not. Uh -huh. We're reading down to 14. But as many as received him, meaning not everybody will be interested in receiving him, but as many as received him, the Bible says he gave them power to become, not just power against it takes power to become a son of God. Even to them that believe on his name, 13, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Verse 14 now, it says the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. John chapter 1 and verse 29, same John, jump to verse 29. The Bible says the next day, I'm showing you the revelation of Jesus Christ as revealed from scripture. Now, let's hear what John has to say about this Jesus. The next day, John being a prophet, do not forget, he saw Jesus coming and he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. John did not say, Behold a handsome 30 year old man coming by the river for baptism. He saw him by the spirit and he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Now I did a little study and I took out time to write here the eight things, claims, revelations that Jesus said about himself. I'm still on point two. There are eight things I found out in the Gospels, especially the book of John. 
eight statements that Jesus made about himself. It's important for us to know what Jesus said about himself. We trust what the prophet said about him. We trust what the Bible generally says through different authors about him. But I think the most trusted expression of who Jesus is was the statement he made about himself. So let's do a little Bible study. I hope we're still together. Number one, the first thing Jesus said, I hope I've not lost you. We're still discussing the revelation of Jesus. But now let's hear what Jesus said about himself. The first thing Jesus said about himself from the book of John is that he called himself, I am. John chapter 8, please, from verse 56 down to 58. Media, let's work together. We'll need to rush. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Jesus is speaking now. And said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet 50 years old. How come? Jesus is saying, This Abraham that you worship, who was the father of Judaism that you practice, he desired to see my day. Because I hope you know the gospel was preached unto Abraham. Abraham had an opportunity to hear the gospel, the Bible says, and Abraham believed God and it was credited to him for righteousness and it became the pattern for administering eternal life. That we will hear the gospel, we will believe like faithful Abraham and in believing, eternal life is credited unto us. Are we together now? So Jesus claimed that he was, I am God himself. Well, let's finish verse 58. And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Does that sound like a similar statement? In Exodus chapter 3 and verse 6, Moses encounters the God of the Bible in the burning bush and he says, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. And then when you go to verse 14, same Exodus 3 and verse 14, Verse 14, 3, 14, 1, 4. And God said to Moses, I am that I am. Now Jesus comes to say that I am. This is the person who is personified here. And they were angry. In John chapter 10, in fact, let's read from verse, uh, let's begin from verse 30. John 10. I and my father are one can be clearer than that Jesus made it straight to them and said listen if the father is God I am also God I and my father are one let's read to 33 verse 31 the Jews took up stones to stone him why Jesus answered them and said many good works I have shown you from my father for which of these works do you stone me and the Jews answered him and said for a good work we stone thee not but for blasphemy and because that thou being a man make it thyself God so the Bible is very clear that Jesus made a clear statement that he was and he is God are we learning the second statement Jesus made about himself as far as his identity is concerned was he called himself the bread of life please write Jesus called himself the bread of life. John chapter 6 from verse 35 and 36. Jesus called himself the bread of life. I am the bread of life, he says. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Next verse. He says, but I say unto you that ye also have seen me and you do not believe. So Jesus said he was God jesus also claimed and said truthfully so that he was and is the bread of life the third thing jesus said about himself was that he called himself the light of the world please write it down the revelation of jesus jesus called himself the light of the world john chapter 8 and verse 12 jesus called himself the light of the world John 8 12 did I get that right yes John 8 12 he said I am the light of the world he that follows followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life that means the light of Jesus gives more than illumination it gives life there is a kind of light called the light of life he called himself the light of the world 
number four am i right on that jesus called himself the door in john chapter 10 we'll read verse 9 then we'll back down to verse 7 john 10 he called himself the door i am the door not i'm holding the door i am the door he says by me if any man enter in why did he say by me because there were other routes that people were attempting to access life and he said i am the door and i've taught you here that a door is an authorized system for access are we together if i jump into your house from the fence i am in your house but i'm a thief because i was not invited are we together the fence is not an official way to enter into a house i am the door and by me if any man enter in the bible says he shall be saved and he shall go in and out and find pasture let's go to verse 7 just two verses before then jesus said unto them verily verily i say unto you i am the door of the sheep and you know he calls us the sheep of his pasture are we learning so jesus said he was god called himself the bread of life called himself the light of the world now he calls himself the door and that is so powerful he didn't say i am one of the doors he said i am the door not even a door hallelujah in acts chapter 4 and verse 12 peter making defense of the gospel before the council he said neither is there salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved it is important for us to understand that jesus is not a more superior option the bible declares and we trust the integrity of scripture that he is the only way the bible describes to the father jesus made that claim and we know that that is true the next thing jesus said about himself was that he called himself the good shepherd he never called himself the good shepherd the bad shepherd the fact that he used the word good already tells you there are bad shepherds are we together the good shepherd john 10 verse 11 john 10 verse 11 the good shepherd i am the good shepherd the good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep so don't say you are good until we see the sacrifice that you are making for the sake of those connected to you what made him good was his willingness to offer his life he called himself the good shepherd can i continue number six jesus called himself the resurrection and the life the resurrection and the life please write it down when you do not have a sufficient revelation of jesus you will find out that your faith would not be properly grounded and anchored upon the integrity of his person bible faith is anchored on the word of god the integrity of all the claims of jesus jesus called himself the resurrection and the life john 11 25 i am the resurrection and the life jesus said to her i am the resurrection and the life someone say the resurrection and the life one more time say the resurrection and the life he said he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live these were the claims of Jesus. The implication of believing that he's the resurrection and the life is that he will sustain the power to bring dead things and dead people back to life. Number six, number seven. According to John 14 and verse six, Jesus told us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Very powerful. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, no man cometh to the Father. In other words, you can never claim to have an encounter and a relationship with the Father, nor even receive anything from the Father outside of the person and the office of the Christ. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life 
to those who are confused he calls himself the way when you find someone confused the first question you ask him is where are you and the person says i don't even know where i am and he says try to describe where you are and then you now start navigating that person from where he or she is to the point they need to be okay what can you see there i can see a signboard i can see a statement oh i know where you are you mean you went that far all right so take a bolt or a cab or an uber from where you are and tell the man and you can even be so merciful to say give me the phone let me talk to the man i want to describe how to get to my point jesus said i am the way that means every time you find yourself confused in life you need jesus the way not just jesus the person jesus the way and then jesus said i am the truth i told you that the truth is not just um a statement that you don't agree with anything that does not stem from the integrity of the christ is a lie anything no matter how popular no matter how societally acceptable it is if it is not consistent with the word of god it is a lie sanctify them by thy truth thy word is truth and now jesus said i am the life the final thing according to the synoptic account of john that jesus said he was is found in john 15 and verse 5 he called himself the vine i am the vine i am the vine then he said ye are the branches we'll discuss that a little further but eight facts that jesus very categorical statements that he made about himself so in your seeking to explore and to know jesus it is important for you to find out what he said about himself most of us have studied what the prophets said about him most of us have studied what unbelievers said about him most of us have studied what demons have said about him but we've not taken time to study the claims that jesus made about himself I am the bread of life, the light of the world, the door, the good shepherd, the resurrection and the life, the way, truth and life, the vine. Jesus said he was all this. If you believe that, shout a loud amen. amen. So back to our context now, we're discussing that the Christian faith has five areas a, a, a believer's a believer's christian pursuit becomes balanced and holistic when you are taught and mentored along these five areas number one we said the revelation of god alongside his eternal plan number two the creation and the fall of man number three the revelation of jesus that includes his incarnation it's important for you to understand that no earthly man the bible declares played the fatherly role of jesus in terms of conception joseph only played the role of stewardship because he was betrothed to mary are we together now jesus is the incarnate one the bible declares incarnate means that he came from heaven the womb of Mary was empowered with seed from on high with no earthly man whatsoever playing any role as far as conception was concerned. You need to understand his incarnation. You need to understand his earth work and ministry. Jesus did not just come to die alone. There were many things he did before he died. He went to the temple, for instance, when you read in Luke chapter 4 from verse 15 downwards, the scroll was given to him. Uh, where he saw the prophecy of Isaiah and he began to read and he quoted Isaiah chapter 61 that the spirit of the Lord is upon me and then when he was done he closed the book the Bible says and he declared to them that this day is this scripture fulfilled in your eyes so you must study the earth work and the ministry of Jesus because among the many things Jesus came to do was to be the pattern man to show us the the accurate portrait of a God pleaser the father declared upon Jesus that he was his beloved son in whom he was well pleased that means if you want to please the father you have to outsource your approach from the study of Jesus looking on to Jesus 
you follow men and women of God as they follow Jesus are we together now then his substitutionary sacrifice still on point three the revelation of Jesus I'm showing you the various facets of that revelation understanding his incarnation understanding his earth work and ministry understanding his substitutionary sacrifice a theological term that is used to capture the entire discourse of his death his burial his resurrection this is what is called the substitutionary sacrifice in fact the, the theological term for it is called his vicarious sacrifice the word vicarious means that whatever you are doing you are doing for the sake of another not for yourself are we together now yes so that everything that happened as we call it from the passion of the Christ from the communion table to Gethsemane to Pontius Pilate to Golgotha to the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea and down the resurrection everything that happened was not for the sake of Jesus he did that in covenant with man and he did that for our sake and then of course his ascension and exaltation do not just stop at his resurrection his resurrection is powerful but there was more after the resurrection Mary came remember she wanted to touch him she said Rabboni and he said do not touch me resurrection is not all there is I have not yet ascended he introduced the term ascension even when he was resurrected already so if you limit your understanding to the resurrection of Jesus you may not maximize the fullness of the finished work of Christ a lot happened when he ascended it was Paul who was granted access to see what happened in heaven that he entered into the most holy place in heaven in the similitude of the high priest and he offered his blood in that heavenly tabernacle once and for all and then a coronation service the psalmist also saw that the Lord said to my Lord sit down at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool so the Bible tells us that a coronation service was held in honor of Jesus but not Jesus alone as you'll be learning now Jesus in partnership with every believer are we together now and in that coronation a name was given to him are we Bible students the word name there means an office, not just a means of identification. A name. Jesus is not the name that was given to him. No. He was already being called Jesus as we know. It was his earthly name. The name that was given to him is found in Psalm 24 verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and his fullness thereof. The Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that that Jesus has now become Lord. The word Lord means absolute owner, master of things in heaven. Are we learning now? Of things in the earth and of things under the earth. So you must understand the implication of his ascension and his exaltation. The fourth aspect in building the believer's faith and conviction is you must now know the believer in Christ. Please write it down. The believer in Christ. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 11. Let me recap very quickly on the aspects I have listed. Number one that the Christian faith is divided into five areas number one the revelation of God alongside his eternal plan number two the creation of man all down to his fall number three the revelation of Jesus who came as the mediator and as Savior then number four the believer in Christ now watch this your study of man is different from your study of the believer because the believer in Christ is an entirely different thing are we together now just because you understand man as a species and as God's creation does not mean the believer is more than a man it's in your Bible it says have I not said Psalm 82 and verse 6 ye are God and all of you are children of the Most High 
then verse 7 says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes the believer is more than a human being the believer is more than a homo sapien the believer is more than someone breathing oxygen and breathing out carbon dioxide the bible has a lot to say about the believer ephesians 2 from verse 11 be patient while i read 2 11 wherefore he says remember that ye been in time past gentiles in the flesh who were called on circumcision i like paul by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands he says that at that time you were without christ he's describing a kind of people without christ being aliens from the commonwealth of israel and strangers from the covenant of promise having no hope and without god in this world but now in christ ye who were sometimes afar off have been made nigh by the blood of christ 14. it says for he is our peace who have made both one and had broken down the middle wall of partition between us 15. having abolished in his flesh the enmity even the law of commandments contained in the ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man so making peace be patient as i read it says and that he might reconcile both the two people he has brought one as one the jews the gentiles now he's brought them one and to reconcile them to god and in one body by the cross having slain the enmity thereby 17 and he came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were nigh 18 it says for through him we both have access by one spirit to the father uh-huh we're reading to 22 19 now now therefore he says ye are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints we are no more strangers and we are no more foreigners as far as the family of god is concerned that which alienated us the bible says jesus christ whether a jew or a gentile in christ we have become one family this is what paul is explaining to the church in ephesus it says and of the household of god 20 and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets christ jesus himself being the chief cornerstone two more verses in whom all the building fitly framed together grow it into an holy temple in the lord the final verse in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of god through his spirit so now he's describing for us this man that we call the believer the believer in christ it's important for you to understand that in christ you have a new identity and you need to understand the full import of that new identity and then you also will have to understand the dynamics of establishing and maintaining your victory in christ these are all the implications of knowing the believer in christ many people study about god they even study about man as a species but they never take the time to study the believer when jesus christ ascended when he resurrected the implication of his victory is that he produced a kind of person and the bible calls that person the believer the believer is more than one who just believe in jesus the believer is one who is the a bona fide recipient of the life of god you call it eternal life the greek word there is the way great fathers and patriarchs like kenneth e hagen would call it the god kind of life now by the progressive advantage of revelation we know that it is not the god kind of life it is god's very life to call it the kind of life means that god has many kinds of life are we together the same spirit not another type Alos paracletos, not heteros. The word alos means of the same kind. That is what we're given. Hallelujah. It's important for you to understand this prophetic implication 
what is the purpose of man the bible has a lot to say about this believer in christ hebrews chapter 2 i believe and verse 8 hear what else the bible has to say about this man thou has put all things in subjection under his feet man for in that thou put all things in subjection under his feet he left nothing that was not put under him that means according to god's desire for this believer in christ absolutely nothing should be left that should not be under his feet but the bible says but now we do not yet see all things under his feet so we need to understand the dynamics of appropriating that victory to be established in our lives here and now listen to me if you are the believer in christ i'm coming there shortly but this is just to give you a very sound orientation that your christian faith will be founded on sand until you understand who the believer is understanding who the believer is is different from studying men you can study men from a psychological standpoint which is very advantageous you can study men from a scientific standpoint homo sapiens that is advantageous you can study men but we are talking about a very unique species of God's creation hallelujah the Bible simply calls us the believers number five what is the last and the final aspect of the believers Christian faith I wrote here the imminent return of Jesus Christ the imminent return imminent is spelled I M M I N E N T the imminent return of Jesus Christ and the ultimate punishment of Satan wicked spirits and those without Christ I'll take it again the imminent return of Jesus Christ and the ultimate punishment of Satan wicked spirits and all those without Christ the Bible is very clear and vocal as to the fact that there are activities that will happen when our sojourn on earth culminates in Acts chapter 1 from verse 9 Acts chapter 1 from verse 9 please give it to us the Bible says and when he had spoken these things to the now 120 who would shortly be receiving the Holy Spirit the Bible says while they beheld watch this he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight verse 10 and while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel let's read 11 together ready one to read which also said uh-huh ye men of Galilee why stand ye gazing up into heaven this same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven number one the same jesus not another jesus he will return in the same similitude you saw him levitating gravity could not hold him you will see him return in that similitude hallelujah revelation chapter 20 from verse 10 john's account now in the isle of patmos while he was caught up in the spirit and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever verse 11 and i saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and heaven fled away and there was found no place for them verse 12 it says and i saw the dead is that in your bible small and great stand before god and the books were opened and another book was opened which was the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works 13 the sea gave up the dead that were in it and death and hell as spirits were delivered they delivered the dead that were in them and they were judged every man according to his works 14 
and death itself and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death 15 it says and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire so these five aspects your christian life can never be rich and robust if you do not capture the revelation of god and his eternal plan number two the revelation of man understanding his fall and then the revelation of jesus the incarnate one who came as a mediator are we together and then the revelation of the believer in christ then the revelation of christ's imminent return if you've learned something so far say amen, amen. now let's discuss a bit about the believers who are celebrating easter theologically believers are classified based on number one their identity in christ i have taught you here and number two based on their function please write when you are describing the believer in christ there are two parameters we use number one based on their identity in christ and number two based on their function you will hear the bible tell us several things describing who we are in christ and then the bible now tells us our mandate and our function with respect to god's eternal plan so when you are describing the believer biblically you use the these two indices our identity in christ and then our function never forget this the bible uses certain terminologies like we are one with christ the bible uses certain terminologies like i am the vine and ye are the branches all of these are attempts to describe our identity in christ then when he speaks about the believer in terms of function he uses words like you are the light you are salt of the earth you are kings you are priests you are ambassadors are we together now the believers identity holds the power listen carefully the believers identity holds the power to his or her walking in victory the believers identity holds the power to his or her walking in victory if you do not know who you have you are in christ the implication of the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus you will never be able to walk in dominion you will never be able to walk in true kingdom power and authority if you're with me please say amen, amen. please look at me you see the realm of the spirit was so designed that the light that emanates from the believer is a product of the revelation that you have and that is what translates to your authority and the power that you exert in the spirit when the sons of skiva came and met the demoniac person they said we adjure you by god whom paul preaches by jesus and the demons responded and said jesus we know he said paul we know but who are you in other words we do not see you standing on the revelation there is no revelation that sponsors what you are saying and they beat those guys and the bible says they ran out naked confession without an understanding of your identity will only make, help you make a mockery of your christian experience unfortunately listen many believers continue to make bold confessions without taking time to really understand who you have become in christ the believer's identity we teach our students in the school of ministry that when we are exploring the identity of the believer the first thing you have to consider and you may want to write is your positional advantage please write that down positional advantage oh hallelujah let this be a revelation to someone your positional advantage what does that mean your positional advantage reveals to you your status and your ranking in the spirit on account of this victorious sacrifice of Christ Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 4 to 7 
This is the revelation that demons do not want the saints to have. This is the revelation that infirmity and all kinds of satanic things, when you do not have this revelation, believe me, no matter what else you know, you will be a victim of the vicissitudes of life. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, five, even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. Say together with Christ. Please shout it. Say together with Christ. By grace are ye saved. Verse 6 now. It says, and had raised Joshua Selman up together. It's not that Jesus, as he was ascending, a mystery was happening that none of these princes knew. He had raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places. This is your spiritual location right now. In heavenly places. Heavenly places is not up. When you look up, what you see is your ceiling. Heavenly places is a location of ranking in the spirit. Because you see, there is order in the spirit. Even among the demonic kingdom, they respect order. It was Paul that gave us the organogram. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities. Against powers. There were a legion of demons in one man, but it was not all of them that spoke. They also believe in obedience. So it's important that you understand that positional advantage because you are able to exert dominion over principalities and powers on account of the consciousness of your status. Is someone learning? We have been raised up. Keep that scripture there, please. We have been raised up together and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ we have been raised up together what is in heavenly places you have to go to Ephesians chapter 1 chapter 1 from verse 19 let's see what is in these heavenly places the Bible says and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power next verse which he wrote in Christ when he raised him from the dead. You see how intelligent Paul is. The first information he gives the church in Ephesus is that Jesus was raised from the dead and made to sit in heavenly places. When we get to chapter 2, he says, in continuing that revelation, you were raised together. Keep the scripture there, please. And set him at his right hand in heavenly places 21 he gives perspective to the implication of being in heavenly places that realm that is far above that organogram that paul would list far above principalities far above powers far above might far above dominion far above every other office that is named not only in this realm but that even in the world to come your status will still hold Listen, this is very powerful. There are many people trying to cast out demons and you find out by the next day your hand is not working again because you came with a blind approach not from the standpoint of your positional advantage. Your feet may be stepping upon the shores of Abuja or any region, but the Bible says in ranking you have been exalted to the very position as Jesus was being coronated. The Bible says in him and with him we sat at that right hand of power. That means every believer in Christ who has this understanding can tell any demon, any spirit in the name of Jesus, you have oppressed my family. I, I have been coming to you as a Nigerian. I've been coming to you as a Yoruba man. I've been coming to you as a Hausa man, but I come from my exalted position. I come with the consciousness of my office. The devil does not respect your earthly locality. No, the devil does not respect your age or your gender. The protocol in the spirit is obedience is based on ranking and spiritual status your positional advantage is someone learning mm. so you may look ordinary for as long as you think you are ordinary 
but the moment you have this awareness listen this is not some pentecostal jamboree no 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 this is, is it is truth the devil knows that this is true same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me tell you the truth when I stand to minister to, for, to people I don't stand with the consciousness of this pulpit this is too low for authority no what is the distance between this and the ground you stand from an exalted position this is not pride it is the truth in the army there are generals is that true and even among generals there are rankings there are colonels, lieutenant colonels, and then like that. If the Bible says, a man of honor who does not know will die like a beast in the field. A man of honor, a man who has been exalted and does not know. A man of honor who does not know. Waiting for the amount in your bank account to impart faith to make you know you are risen with Christ will cost you a lot. Waiting for the applause of men. You must carry this consciousness. It is not a privilege of preachers. It is not a privilege of the western world. The same Lord is rich unto all. They say I perceive, I see that God is no respecter of persons. Exalted. 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 His possibilities become my possibilities. Exalted. In the name of Jesus Christ, far above great fathers of faith like Bishop Oyedeko will call it a far above mentality, and they've proven it with their lives. The Bible says, He that cometh from above, give us John 3:31. He that cometh from above is above all. He that cometh from the north is a northerner. He that cometh from it's the south is a southerner. He that cometh from America is an American. But he that cometh from above is above all. Is above all. Is above all. Above causes. Above yokes. Above limitations. He that cometh from above. The preacher that comes from above, the businessman that comes from above, the parents that comes from above, the career person that comes from above. I am more than a Nigerian. As much as I'm proud of being a Nigerian, it, it, it is more than being a Nigerian, more than being an, an African, more than being on the earth here. I may not look like it, but the Bible says I come from above. Prophesy to yourself, I come from above. I come from above. In the name of Jesus, shake off limitations. Shake off the negative speakings of men. I come from above. Hallelujah. Man of God, the day you carry this consciousness, it should not plant pride but there is a settled confidence i come from above that means everything will be exempted for me it can't be normal when it comes to my turn no there is an advantage and i insist that at that advantage be reflected in my life he that cometh from above do you believe the bible Now you see, sit down please, please sit. Satan, listen my dear people, Satan is the master of the sense realm. He knows that until the believer is properly mentored 
to a point where you become spiritually minded there is such a thing as being spiritually minded and there is such a thing as being carnally minded are we bible students the bible says to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace what does it mean to be carnally minded that means your convictions are based on the impulses of the flesh the impulses of the sense realm if i check my account and i see a thousand naira there and i look and find myself in one small room and i'm trekking with no vehicle i use those things to now describe myself and i feel stupid for believing what the word of god has said so because satan knows that except the believer is properly mentored to be spiritually minded the default state is to use the things around you there are many wealthy people who are not seated in heavenly places there are many intelligent people who are not seated in heavenly places being seated in heavenly places is a status that comes as a gift by being in Christ the moment you have that understanding now you understand what I mean by the statement that we made earlier that the victory of the believer is not dependent or the dominion of the believer is not dependent on the victory of Christ alone it's dependent on your understanding there is a consciousness that swallows up limitation you can sit down in your one room and take Gary with honor still seated in heavenly places and you force that reality in that room to change and look like what the Word of God says do you believe what I'm saying I'm seated with Christ I'm seated with Christ seated with Christ it has made me an overcomer seated with Christ if you don't trust me trust the person I'm seated with hallelujah there are times that when they are giving offering in church children may not have offering but the people they are seated with can bail them out is that true they can be passing the offering bag and you are seated with no offering and someone seated close to you who you are seated close to matters spiritually speaking so you don't feel bad now but physically speaking because the person you are seated close to is seated with Christ hmm. the Bible kept telling us and showing us the picture of God and Jesus a number of times when Stephen was about to be retired out of the many things the Bible records that he saw was that scenario the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of the father in honor of a Messiah who was coming home ladies and gentlemen I submit to you there is no greatness for anybody in Christ who does not understand this you are not the first to come from a weak background you are not the first to start ministry with all kinds of limitations your status becomes your advantage in this wicked world he that cometh from above let me indoctrinate you again he that cometh from above cometh from above you will always reflect your location he that cometh from above he that cometh from above is above all the Bible says he that is of the earth do you know he's he's listing different realities alongside the consciousness that activates them that means you have an an option of having an above mentality an earthly mentality and we will know your conviction by your speaking the Bible says he speaketh of the earth he that cometh from heaven is above all what is all above everything above all you don't see limitations in your life your only limitation is the voice of God and the law of process what business does a plane have with a mountain what business does a plane have with water it is above the concept of mountain and river and valley is a relative statement is very relative a person who is flying 35,000 feet above sea level does not even know that he just passed a mountain so what you call a mountain is a representation of the realm you are looking at things from 
are we together what is the business of someone who is flying 35,000 above sea level with a snake that is moving on a mountain or a dog that is barking on the ground or an arm robber who is waiting on the ground no there are certain realities that will never reflect in your life until your mindset changes now let me tell you the balance most believers have not been taught this positional advantage properly it has translated to pride without revelation so there are people who cannot start small they say god forbid i will never take gary in my life again i will never take this i can't stay in this one room i am no 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 this is not your physical realities does not if a king stays in a hut you call that hut a palace it's not it's not listen it is the it is the king's influence that changes the environment not the environment are we together there's a particular king in this nation i think he's still alive he was king at age two two years some of you may come from his region two years he became king and you see the small boy with all kinds of rappers that look like they just wanted to snap him whether you believe him or not he's king and from that time till now he's been king your positional advantage your positional advantage i always marvel at an aircraft as it lifts you will see it turning very slowly lazily sometimes you are looking at your time and you're almost getting angry and it looks like the plane spoils just be patient let it get to the end of the runway and it starts moving to a point that you cannot even tell what speed is at and in literally without exaggeration in less than a minute is already far above you, you you just keep looking at things and houses now become like toys the bible now says we have been raised up it's a spiritual location so when a spirit talks verify what realm before you waste your time with heart attack and pain and whatever it is if someone looks at you and says you will never amount to anything before you waste your energy verify from what standpoint I truly believe this about myself and I'm proposing this understanding that this is what sponsors your victorious living you will waste the experience of Easter if you just celebrate Jesus alone you must know that as he was raised I was raised with him I was raised with him I was not raised with him as an apostle I was raised with him as a believer I am first a believer before a man of God when you strip me of everything I have the last thing that will be left is my status as a believer and the Bible tells that it is the greatest status behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God not men of God sons of God is a greater status than a man of God a man of God is a description that shows the geography of your assignment a man of God does not describe your identity with God but being a son of God the child of a CEO and a board member in that company in terms of status and access who is greater hmm. do you believe what I'm teaching you ah. mortal man awesome God mortal man awesome that I'm just a mortal man, awesome man. Unassisted, outside of Christ, we are mortal men. The word mortal means death doomed, subject to deterioration at any point. That's what it means to be mortal. But when you are joined to Christ, let's continue. So in discussing the identity of the believer, the first thing we are looking at is your positional advantage, your exalted position, elevated in ranking. I wish we had time, we would have looked at the adumbration of this in Genesis chapter 41. Genesis chapter 41, when you read from verse 40, what happened to the man you called Joseph in Egypt was a foreshadow 
of what was going to happen to the believer are we together now so joseph interprets the dream of pharaoh and in an instant he's exalted thou shalt be over my house pharaoh said and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled only in the throne will i be greater than thou 41 it says and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have set thee over all the land 42 it says and pharaoh took off the ring of his hand and put it upon joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck 43 and he made him to ride on the second chariot which we he had and they cried before him bow the knee and he made him ruler over all the land of egypt seated with christ in that exalted position number two the second dimension of our oneness with christ that helps to establish the victory that we now have in christ or the second dimension of our identity in christ i meant to say is our oneness with christ so we're looking at two things as far as the identity of the believer is concerned number one our positional advantage and then number two our oneness with christ let's discuss oneness ephesians chapter 5 from verse 30 to 32 isn't it very interesting that when it had to do with oneness the only example the apostle could get to explain the extent of our oneness with christ is marriage he says for we are members of his body of his flesh and of his bones watch this 31 for this cause this understanding for this cause the intention to use marriage to exemplify you see that the mystery between christ and his church shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife and they too shall be called what it didn't say they shall be called strangers who have been joined with a ring it took more than a ring to bring them together a ring was just a token are we together 32 it says this is a great mystery that means marriage among the many things it seeks to provide is the most graphic representation of the extent of the oneness of the believer with christ are we together the same way when a man gets married to his wife she changes her name and begins to bear his son name am i right on that you now call her mrs his name Give me that scripture please the bible now said it is a great mystery he says paul is saying but this is not marriage seminar i'm speaking about christ and the church christ acting as the husband and the church now as the wife i have taught you this that theologically speaking is called the doctrine of interpenetration is the mystery by which two entities become one different people but now bound by that covenant in ancient times they had what they called a salt covenant a salt covenant was a way of describing the depth of unity that could exist between two people so if two people were to step into a covenant and they meant business everyone would come with a measure of their salt watch this now and they would pour it in a container this will pour this will pour and then they would shake it and mix it together the condition for that covenant to break is for everybody to pick the salt they brought are we together now inseparable and the church is married to a responsible husband for starters he came to die for you even while you were yet a sinner number two he's exalted and he carried you along are you seeing responsibility number three while he's seated he's still interceding oneness with christ oneness with christ oneness with christ let's look at a few scriptures john 14 17 john 14 17 john 14 17 watch this our oneness with christ is sponsored by the presence of the spirit of the living god watch this 
the spirit of the living God is the principal factor that provides the basis for our oneness with God even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive why because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you Jesus is speaking now he's telling them about an experience that would happen shortly for he dwelleth with you now he shall be in you John 17 and verse 20 Jesus is speaking concerning our oneness neither pray I for these alone but for them which also shall believe on me through thy word aha uh -huh, 21 it says that they may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee are we together that they may also be in us look at the description of the oneness I am in you you are in me now for the believer in Christ that he is now part of us as far as that oneness is concerned that the world may know that thou has sent me 22 he says and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them that they may be one as we are one first Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17 first Corinthians 6 17 let's read together very simple expression ready one to read but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit one more time but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit do you know what that means that everything that makes Jesus Jesus both in his earth work and his glorified state he has freely shared it with you through his spirit the implication of your being one with Christ listen carefully is that number one you are a recipient of his life when he says I am the vine and you are the branches it is the same nutrient that flows from the vine to the branches and then expresses itself as the fruit you know what the branch is the fruit bearing part of the vine you want to know how healthy the vine is look at the branches and then the fruits that come from them Romans chapter 8 and verse 11 Romans 8 11 please write Romans 8 11 the Bible says but if the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead dwelleth in you it says he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body look up please it is my prayer and I will tell you I still continue to press into this as a person it is my prayer that we come into the full comprehension of this mystery I believe that before Jesus Christ comes there will be a practical manifestation of dominion over sickness and diseases it looks like this dimension of dominion I submit to you for some reason it looks like the church has declined in walking in this dominion for various reasons there are scientific reasons there are climatic reasons atmospheric reasons all kinds of things the kind of food that we eat but I can tell you the Bible says that the, the implication of our oneness with Christ is that something can happen to your body that stops it from deterioration and that you walk in health and vitality eating well is wonderful but that is not the reason why the Bible tells you you are you should you are free of sickness I believe in eating well I believe in uh, all the medical things but I've, I've cautioned us don't be careless we have doctors here if you are not feeling well go to the back go and meet them they will treat you and you are still a Christian are we together we are not going to be foolish in addressing spiritual things and allow people to die the doctors are not antichrist while your faith is growing to stand and you know at to, in a position now where you can be free of sickness doctors hospitals and medicine are expressions of God's mercy so please don't feel bad don't go and swallow drugs in secret and come and tell lies and say I don't take drugs that's not the issue 
thank God for your understanding but let's be truthful and be matured and take away any kind of childishness out of the body of Christ treat yourself with honor go to the hospital with honor take responsibility over your body but at the back of everything you do please do not ignore the Spirit of God the Bible says if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead if that same spirit that same spirit not another that raised Christ from the dead dwell that means if it is true that God did not lie if it is true that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you he says that same spirit shall quicken the word quicken there means administer vitality health to your mortal body by the same spirit I submit to you that the body of Christ is yet to come into the fullness of this revelation there are people here and there who have caught it but if we are to be very honest there's nothing embarrassing about it it is a dimension we can press to with faith and understanding God does not lie this Bible you see cannot be broken let God be true and every man including our experiences be liars whilst we trust God for the ministry of doctors we must get to a point where we carry this consciousness I am one with Christ someone say I'm one with Christ because we live in very evil days you will see a teenager headache headache and the next thing they will tell you they found a tumor there are we together and you are wondering how old is this child who was a healthy child I hope you know that some of these demonic things are devilish are we together I heard about someone who got up in the morning I mean played around and went to bed got up in the morning and was completely blind no symptom no progression completely I've heard of people who within a span of one to two months they just had an acceleration of cancer cells until it got to stage four just like that I believe in this healing wave I believe in the vitality of the saints we don't contend for divine health because of fear of death death has already been conquered based on our positional advantage the Bible says to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord it didn't say to be traveling somewhere to be present with the Lord so whether in this life or beyond this life we are victorious and let me encourage you if you've lost any loved one to sickness bodily deterioration accidents activities of terrorists etc please find hope based on the integrity of scripture find hope and comforts that to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord nonetheless we are given the assignment to keep progressing in our knowledge until we attain a point where we can dare sickness we can look at these evil spirits that were sent from hell I wish I had the time I would have shown you the spirits that were released to the earth in the book of Revelation they were released to the earth and they were given certain assignments kill a third of the people it was a mandate and then there was a rider upon a pale horse having the pair of balances and the Bible says his name is death and his assignment is to kill men no devil will take my life before my time in the name of Jesus Christ many people are afraid now because it looks like scripture cannot be trusted again when it has to do with this issue of divine health and longevity these are the scariest areas for believers right now because it looks like there is a growing dominion of sicknesses and diseases over believers are we together to a point where it seems unusual right now for an average person to be free of any sickness it looks unusual but I submit to you in the name of Jesus Christ that before Christ returns 
there will be a manifestation of this revelation there are saints of God without pretense and lying who will walk in the reality of this resurrection power if you believe that shout amen, amen. what's that beautiful song you sang by your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat I don't know the other part sing it for me Kenneth Copeland and you can imagine that man in his 80s and he's one of the people that have represented an inspiration to the body of Christ sickness and health is one area you cannot fake for too long if you are lying eventually age mixed with wickedness and demon spirits will catch up with you the Bible talks about Joshua and Caleb these were men who were strong and even in their 80s their natural strength was not abated is it not in your bible hmm. by your spirit i will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrecting me Hallelujah. I have read from church history books a few men who walked upon this earth and demonstrated that this thing called divine health, the dominion of the saints over spirits that afflict, is a reality. Please do not, I'm going to pray for people before we end up who are having all kinds of plagues of sickness but you don't know how angry i am in my spirit not just because of my call by the privilege of what i do i have been to many hospitals praying for people i have seen how sickness can literally trap the life of of not just the victim but the entire family that every they keep building projects at a halt they keep education as a halt everything must wait to honor that spirit the resurrected king is resurrecting me that's what is happening do, do, listen listen do you know how wicked sickness is it does not care whether you are Muslim Christian whether you are a baby I've prayed for babies that I can how wicked can Satan be just when you build your house and you want to rejoice with your children you get up in the morning and one part of your leg cannot walk I was shown one of our dear ladies she probably may be here something happened to the father and he said he just felt pain on his leg and the next thing when i saw the picture it was like twice the size of a normal leg and everything was already rotting. don't tell me it just happened there is something these spirits know that the church is yet to know and the secret is not just in bold face somebody must be given the mandate to reintroduce this thing to the body of christ with authenticity and I'm praying that God will be able to trust us that in our generation we'll be able to say we have found something we have among the keys that we have been given 
that we can administer the same way you can minister the baptism the same way you can teach a person from being poor to be prosperous the same way you can mentor a person john g lake the bible says at the time of john lake in spokane that they had healing rooms it's in your history books they would keep people there for 30 days under a strong influence of the healing anointing and afterwards you will find them walk great men like kenneth e hagen charles and francis hunter ew kenyon name them ah. by your spirit i will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrecting me in your name i come alive you declare your Listen, do you know how much of a blessing you will be if you can heal just one sickness, just one category effortlessly? You know how many people on earth they will look for you, they will pay to see you, they will cry to do whatever. That is how degraded man has become. We need a restoration. We are tired of talk and claims of unverified stories authentic manifestations of the healing power of jesus not just from one person or one man of god two or three men of god are too small to handle this urgency we need a widespread manifestation of the healing power of jesus all across this nation across africa one with christ if that same spirit that raised christ from the dead the dead body of jesus was lying on the tomb and the spirit of god came and entered that tomb and resurrected that body now the bible says that same spirit lives in you listen listen just help those under the anointing listen carefully hear me the bits that we have gotten is what is the the little revelation that we have scratched is what is producing what people call an outstanding ministry right now and yet compared to what we still have to learn and know and manifest we are still toddlers as far as understanding when it comes to the healing ministry i submit to you on earth today there are great men but there are few people that can beat their chest and say generals of healing let's not lie to ourselves you know what it means to be a general you have mastered the dynamics of reproducing a result under any condition there are generals of prosperity there are generals of teaching but my goodness the world is waiting 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 and let me tell you church of the lord jesus christ if we do not validate this oneness by the results that we produce a day will come familiar spirits will partner with men and women and you will begin to see similitudes of many healings that are antichrist and no matter what you say about it it will not make any difference because if your child is dying and you're a responsible parent you will look for anything within your power to keep that child alive while on one hand we are shouting and telling people don't go to herbalist have you been able to be a worthy alternative a man who healed someone's son someone's daughter healed the whole family through divination of hiv now you are saying you should not go to that man jesus heals prove it and at the end of it we finish the service and share the grace and then we boast and say three people were healed out of how many and have those three been verified uh, listen i'm not being we thank god for what god is doing so far but let me tell you the truth when i return back in spite of the mighty things that god does here i know what an avalanche of the power of god can do there are a few things we have laid hold on by the grace of god we must press to reveal the reality of this oneness. John G. Lake 
when the plague hit the city where he was people were dying and if you contacted that plague just like a coronavirus was it would kill you there the foam from the mouth history records and he was helping the people to bring out the dead bodies and those who were affected and the medical people warned him they said be careful you are putting your life at risk and they were right and he said no then it, an experiment was performed we were told where they put the foam from the mouth of one who was dead and they found out i was told that the whole the whole thing just died like that they couldn't find anything alive it couldn't affect him hmm. can i tell you there are arrows that fly by day that are being released to the earth that we have not seen there are spirits that i'm, I'm not making you afraid except you don't believe the bible there are sicknesses that will not have names medical science is coming to a point of honest admission right now that there are things that their machines cannot diagnose are we together now mysterious occurrences satanic manifestations just like that a child wakes up in the morning and that's the end of it cannot see cannot walk cannot talk they go to the hospital and they find out that that child has some feet problem some heart problem just like that someone just collapses on the ground and they find out Abba. church of the lord jesus christ preaching is powerful but you see what we preach as resurrection today was not a sermon it was an activity that happened are we together the times i have seen the manifest power of god to lift to heal i have been blessed watching those people who were healed you don't know what it means for a family when they experience the authentic power of god to heal verified verified That someone who was diagnosed stage 4 cancer the person goes to the hospital and you run all the tests and they say you are cancer free completely what 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 do you know how many sermons will come out of that testimony the world is tired of the lots of noise that we keep making we need to understand that our oneness with Christ, if true, has an implication that we must demonstrate here and now. Is someone learning? By your spirit, I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrected me. Some of you as you are listening to me right now, there are sick people in your family. Some of you as you came here now, you are here with all kinds of death sentences. Celebrating Easter without experiencing the power is a mockery of god to the world did you hear what i said celebrating easter without the power made manifest is a mockery of god to the world the power component the ability to validate that resurrection write this down write this down write this down write this down my spirit is fired up now write this down Please play the strings for me. Watch this. I wrote something down here. By reason, by reason of our positional advantage and our oneness with Christ, we now have access to the following. Please write. By reason of our positional advantage and then our oneness with Christ through His Spirit, we have access 
to the blessings of his blood right please we have access to the blessings of his blood his life his word his name his presence and his power let me take it again by reason of our exalted position our positional advantage and then our oneness with Christ we have access to the blessings of his blood the blessings of his life the blessings of his word the blessings of his name the blessings of his presence the blessings of his power so when you say you are a believer you are one who in christ has been exposed to these forces of victory that you have access to the blessings that come with his blood his life i repeat his word his name his presence and his power write this down our mandate please start this statement it is one of the major statements that i came tonight to tell you if you can summarize everything i have taught you it is captured in this statement you are about to write our mandate is not complete if we only celebrate the resurrection write that down you will still continue the statement but write it down our mandate is not complete if we only celebrate the resurrection our mandate is not complete if we only celebrate the resurrection the greater task is to be validators of his resurrection our mandate is not complete if we only celebrate the resurrection as a ritual a moment in time march or april the greater task is to be validators of his resurrection and that is the topic of this discussion tonight validators of his resurrection how by revealing the kingdom the power and the glory of this jesus this jesus we claim died this jesus we claim rose again and is now seated at the right hand of the father the greater task is to be validators of his resurrection by revealing the power the kingdom the power and the glory of jesus listen to me easter is not a ceremony no there is no power in the observance of the dates the real way to celebrate easter is to become validators of that resurrection when you are a validator of that resurrection you are celebrating Easter every day not just one day yes of course it may be profitable to commemorate those times just to keep us in the knowledge that Christ did this and if that is our understanding that is fine but if it's just a blind Christian ritual then it will soon turn to idolatry because in itself it will not have any power the real power of Easter is that we obtain grace at this time to be validators of his resurrection by ensuring that from us and through us there will be a revelation of the kingdom the power and the glory of Jesus the kingdom the power and the glory of Jesus revealed through the saints to be a blessing to the world is the true essence of Easter Acts chapter 4 and verse 33 I like us to read it together one to read and with great power gave the Apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all it took more than celebration to give witness the Bible says with great power let hope let it rise darkness trembles in your holy light let hope rise darkness trembles in your 
holy land. This is the prophetic word for someone. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy land. Hear me. God did not send us here to just be celebrators of an event. We have been given a mantle and a mandate from heaven that as far as you are alive that this territory will not forget God by the abundance of the witness that your life provides. The Bible calls us validators. There is a claim that God brought Jesus to prove and we are alive today here and now to be validators of those claims. When Jesus came in Luke chapter 4, he entered the temple and they gave him the scroll of Isaiah and he flipped to where it was written Isaiah 61. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive and the recovery of sight to them that are bruised. The Bible says, when he was done, the eyes of all of them were fastened upon him and they looked at him and he said, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears and he looked through the congregation. The healing ministry, according to Luke's synoptic account, was one of the first validations. He saw a man with a withered hand and he said, stretch your hand and that man stretched his hand no assumption no whether you were healed or not healed jesus for you he went to cana of galilee according to john chapter 2 the first miracle recorded according to john synoptic account the bible says wine had finished but watch jesus he was right there in that occasion and he said don't worry there is something we can do the presence of the kingdom is here and let me show you the power and the glory that comes with this kingdom fill six vessels and fetch the water take it to the rulers we claim that we have the same spirit we pray in tongues and shout in tongues but the benefit the proof of that oneness is not there there's nothing wrong with our prayer and all of that is only that do you know why the world keeps looking at the Christian faith as a nuisance to civilization because respectfully speaking we are full of activities energetic activities that demand our time money and investment but there is an evidence that the world is waiting for Listen, ladies and gentlemen, God has not called us to be a continuation of this limitation. The body of Christ has tried, but we must step up the bar. Easter is a reminder. Easter is a wake-up call. He said, awake thou that sleepest. It is not just a time to eat chicken and turkey. That's wonderful. But beyond that, you must go back and ask yourself, am I a true validator or am I just a, a, a person discussing Romans chapter 8 and verse 18 it says for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us 19 says for the earnest expectation of the creator waited for the manifestation of the sons of God verse 20 says for creation was made subject to vanity not willingly but by reason of him that subjected the same in hope 21 says because the creature itself shall also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the saints hear me everyone who is listening to me here in zaria all the overflows outside our global family there is a mandate and a mantle upon your life to be a validator easter is not just a time to say wow we finished easter now the next one is christmas we keep recycling these rituals and they become burdensome rituals with no power they can even become hedonistic activities that end up most people reject jesus during these festive periods because their lives are full of practices that are even anti-resurrection 
most times around these periods all people do is just to dance to eat and to drink and it's even those who don't know Jesus that celebrated most we look to Yahweh Yahweh I hope it's Yahweh Yahweh we look to Yahweh we look to Yahweh Ephesians 2 10 then we'll go to 3 10 Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 then we'll do 3 and verse 10 the Bible says for we are his workmanship say amen, amen. created in Christ Jesus the same way a black a blacksmith would sit down and begin to fashion a farming tool because of the kind of work it will do are we together now there was a time I was looking for a particular video and then I stumbled across this video where a very heavy steel materials are created that crush metals, cars and all of those things and you, you would watch them squeeze a car, squeeze anything at all. Just squeeze it like a piece of paper as it passes through. And I said, that's it. So the Bible says we are his workmanship. You were fashioned. The nature of your build tells you your assignment. The nature of your build. God took time to pour himself into you. The Bible says created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Which God had before ordained. So our good works is consistent with his predeterminate counsel. For ordained that we should walk in them. Give us chapter 3 and verse 10. To the intent. What intent? Paul said unto me, I'm the least of all the saints, but this grace was given to me to teach men the unsearchable riches of Christ to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, the ecclesia, the manifold wisdom of God. There is a dimension of God's grace and power and kingdom and glory and wisdom that the world is waiting for listen to me it takes more than being an inventor to take the world i can tell you one area where the world is desperately crying for is dominion over time dominion over wicked spirits that afflict men this is trouble that both the rich the poor the educated the uneducated africa and the west the world has not been able to come up with a permanent solution of dominion over wicked spirits it is the one thing that puts all of us in the same position naturally speaking the wealthy man is looking for solution for his health his longevity and his life the weak man is looking for the same thing. In Africa, we are crying. In Europe, we are crying. In America, we are crying. Because when it has to do with this one, the answer is not on earth. The answer only resides with he that is seated on the throne. Jesus walked upon the earth and demonstrated invincibility. These spirits cried. They begged him. Begged him. Don't cast us from here. And with one word he said go and that was it we sing all kinds of songs that implicate us what manner of man is Jesus we clap and we dance he made the blind to see and while we're saying it almost every case we're calling has the people represented there and we finish preaching and we say let's share the grace we organize all kinds of things miracle services healing services and I, I'm not downplaying it we're doing our best with what we know but I'm telling you we need to raise the bar with all honesty and reintroduce the power of Jesus to the world again they have a right to reject our Jesus until we can prove he's alive not say he's alive not sing he's alive not argue that he's alive and evidence 
is the end of all arguments the assignment of an evidence is that it comes as a token of truthfulness when you go to the court of law it is not your noise the judge is waiting for they may listen to you patiently or impatiently but when they get tired they ask you do you have your evidence that is why arguing in the secular you must come with statistics facts and figures when you come and say this one is happening they say prove it have you done a thorough research have you come up with statistics so when we travel across the nations and with their people and say jesus is lord they have a right to sit down and say what do you mean he is lord jesus is lord i need that lord over the condition of my child watch jesus he meets a woman at Nain and says I, it's, a, it's an expensive statement to say i am lord bring that coffin down and he lifts that dead body he goes to meet jarius's daughter and he was interrupted by the woman with the issue of blood by the time he's done with her Jairus's daughter is dead and he says no problem with me there's nothing like too late get out of the room talita kumi little girl i say unto you arise naman was a man who was leprous it was not a parable and the prophet casually without hoping it to work go and wash seven times and you will know there is a prophet in Israel today we call ourselves prophets and apostles and thank God we are trying but ah in the name of Jesus and in the name of honesty we need to draw this bar and stretch it wide enough in 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 the days of the Bible if you were called a prophet it was almost like you were God when a donkey got missing after three days they said let's not be fools looking around there is a man we know not there is a place they stopped the issue of location they said there is a personality that embodies the possibilities of god this mysterious entity called samuel that his word does not fall to the ground whatever it is between him and god we do not know but we know that this is a human being and a half let's go and meet him and they were on their way watch this and true to their word as soon as they saw samuel the donkey started going home what kind of a wicked donkey is that that will allow his owners to suffer and then as soon as you meet a prophet the donkey was on his way going back home may god take us to these realms can you imagine that the new testament was founded upon better promises and yet we are yet to touch and scratch that dimension there is something this man knew about god that we need to pray that god will impart to our lives and our generation otherwise we will continue to mock the integrity and the potency of god's word there are all kinds of movements editing the bible downplaying saying god did not mean this because when you don't have proof for many years you have to create a theology to, to downplay what happened are we together the apostle was teaching and somebody died and he said sorry he went out raised the person brought the person back and the lecture continued Kai. Oh, let revival come again let it come again let it come whatever made us become this dead whatever made us celebrating spiritual mediocrity from place to place there is there is there is a high calling a high standard are we together Samuel looks at Saul and says let us go up and I will tell you what is in your heart is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be captain over his army and he said three things will happen to you because you met me number one the donkey that has been missing on your way back you will find out it has been discovered number two you will meet three men holding two loaf of bread they will salute you and give you which you should receive number three you will come to the garrison of the philistines he says and that when you come there the hand of the lord will come upon you the spirit of god will be upon you and you will prophesy look at the man elijah resting upon the mountain and they bring an arm in bands of 50. look at how this guy suffered in military school and stood before a prophet and he downplayed their training with one shout from heaven 
fire came down and roasted all of them they brought another ban again the third ban begged they said we are military people but we're not stupid brothers and sisters nothing this powerful listen nothing this powerful should easily go out of fashion christianity is fading away because the the wow factor the attracting factor in the faith work is dwindling and fading and what is left are just religious rituals and the celebrating of men as superstars and god is tired of that there needs to be a definite restoration of power the power of the holy spirit the power of the holy spirit i'm not even talking of your ability to heal everything let's even say you just obtain the grace to heal cancer alone that you can come up and say any other thing i've not caught the revelation but if it is cancer forward march let me tell you you will weary yourself like moses from morning till night because you will see a cue that unifies both rich and poor male and female people will travel from every place and they will come that they have learned that god is with you there are names there are titles there are legends and tales of strength but only a shoe will wait forever to his kingdom there'll be no end hear me in the name of jesus if there is anyone here under the sound of my voice and it is part of your prophetic destiny to carry this healing anointing i stand right now and i stretch my hands wherever you are may that mantle begin to locate you now may that mantle begin to locate you now the mantle that grants you the grace to validate the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus obtain that grace now hear me hear me i can tell you the truth mantles do not leave the earth every mantle you see in the bible and every mantle you see in modern history is still hovering around the earth waiting for aligned vessels and god is crying in these days this is the sound of the spirit that easter should not just be a time of blind celebration but for 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 god's sake that someone's life can begin to cry maranatha come healing grace come healing grace come lord jesus come lord jesus dominion over wicked spirits that cut short the life of people and plague their bodies thank god for the little we are doing but for god's sake let's contend for higher levels he showed me a river he measured a thousand cubits it was to my feet a thousand cubits it was to my knees a thousand cubits it was to my loins and a thousand cubits an overflowing river a thousand cubits there are kings there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones but only a shoe we reign forever to his kingdom there be no
with my life that Lord whatever it will take to hold superior dimensions of your power for my generation I will pay that price in Christ I will obtain grace to press because I will never join a queue that keeps misrepresenting the power and the potential of the kingdom ladies and gentlemen we must graduate from falling down and shouting in church to producing valid results that demonstrate the resurrection of christ the bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection and great grace great grace great grace that was what was responsible great grace great grace that people will run to your house while you are sleeping they are patient we are not here to wake you we know God is with you we will wait until you wake up because we know that one declaration from you can rewrite the realities of our life this is not human worship the Bible calls God being embodied in a man a mystery of godliness it's a great is a mystery of godliness that God became a man seen of men and angels he said as my father has sent me so send I you the gospel was never supposed to be this difficult to communicate the difficulty is the alternative we try to bring to explain away the absence of authentic results hear me what do you tell a woman who comes to church with her child because you told them that Jesus heals how do you explain a woman who comes to church say by 7 a.m. in the morning for a service that will start at 3 or 4 and she sits down with the expectation that Jesus will meet her child do you know what will happen to that woman as she drags that child back home and they say you went to church in the morning some even take a step of faith to take the child out from the hospital and say after all you're on your way dying but I hear Christians say Jesus resurrected let us bring him there this is not about the issue of being called into the healing ministry or not except you hate Jesus you should contend for the healing anointing in this end time more love more power more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life let that be the prayer of a generation lifespan in Africa last I checked is 48 years that means the moment you get to 48 years in Africa most likely it's countdown for you where is that here and yet respectfully speaking we are all here men and women of God believers all kinds of books the Bible we have we keep printing it in different versions for better understanding I'm not being sarcastic. Let me tell you, anybody who loves God must throw away that arrival mentality and we must begin to cry in all honesty because thank God for the little we have done. And I say little without a sense of exaggeration. Relative to what we need to bring as we usher in the return of Christ, let God be true. There are virgin dimensions of power we are yet to get to. And we must learn how to hold on to the four horns of the altar and cry until mantles are falling here tonight. Once again, anointings are falling here tonight. 
mentored me in the area of healing through their materials Charles and Francis Hunter and I remember they wrote a book a little book it was captured in a statement that one manifestation of healing is worth a thousand sermons I agree I agree I agree that one person rising from a wheelchair is greater than many series put together no wonder the bible calls men living epistles that a man's life can be a sermon and it can preach more articulately than any other person regardless your level of oratory i taught you here commanding salvation over territories listen to the message i told you that results are evangelists there is a sermon only results can preach there are certain sermons that only resolves can preach results are preachers results are preachers healing miracles are preachers supernatural manifestations of prosperity can preach the gospel breakthrough favor these manifestations of the kingdom they are preachers my assignment and your assignment is to be worthy conduits that the power of God can flow through us to the nations like a river a few a few weeks from now when UK bring in the gospel with the power of God among the many tens of thousands of people that are coming are people who are sick people who are oppressed hoping that these people coming will not be noisemakers again recycling our expectations and not making them granted do you know what jesus did to the fig tree that had leaves to attract him and not produce fruit he did not advise it he caused it my prayer for myself all the time it is that I do not become a man of God who attracts people proposing many things that I cannot defend listen every revelation God gives you before you start preaching it stay with God to access the grace dimension of that revelation the things we have seen the things we have heard the things our hands have handled of the word of life it says that is what we preach I am not ashamed of the gospel the apostle said for it is the power beyond the message it is the power I don't want to just talk about a healing Jesus I want to demonstrate a healing Jesus I don't just want to talk about a prospering Jesus I, I don't just want to talk about a delivering Jesus patriarchs of faith who have joined the cloud of witnesses now like Reinhard Bonke they would come and say Africa shall be saved and with the simplicity of their voices and their body language they moved across nation to nation and they, nothing could resist them they demonstrated they gave witness to the resurrection I once listened to a message by T.L. Osborne and almost half of the message I was in tears I was not in tears in self-condemnation I just cried and I said God what is this what happened to us at what point did we miss it was it poor mentorship was it inadequate consecration what at what point let me tell you this transformation will always be faster when there are models that now exemplify what people should enter into for as long as we still tell people be this 
there has to be men who personify these possibilities and we thank God for people in the body of Christ who at least have been able to show a roadmap but I submit to you with every sense of responsibility bragging at our current result will be a mockery of the integrity of God because I submit to you there is still a long journey for as long as there are cancer people dying the doctors now depend on us for support and we are disappointing them we mock and insult doctors and say doctors you are useless we believe in the power of god the doctors have said okay we agree we are limited come and help us they give us access to hospitals to pray for the sick even against the ethics of their practice because we propose to them that we have superior power and yet we've not been able to demonstrate it and with gallancy they tell us get out keep arguing your case while we do our best as instruments of mercy it is my prayer that my generation will be able to stand and lift among the many graces we are not called to do everything but this healing banner not to brag and say i had a meeting five people were healed what does that mean glory be to god but relative to what when a student scores five over hundred did he pass dear lecturer please answer me did he pass no five percent is wonderful you didn't get zero but you still failed they will categorize you together with the person who did not even write the exam. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed in me. Till Christ be formed in me. Till Christ be formed in me. I'm forced to recall the vision that I had many years ago and in that vision I was in an environment it was a night time just like it is when it's night or when there's a curfew and I saw all kinds of sick people terrible diseases and they were lying there you know how especially in parts of the north you just have people who have all kinds of sicknesses and they were there and I came I was heartbroken and I began to sob, to weep, to look at these people because I felt very helpless. I had the heart and the compassion to help them. But the grace was not there. And then I heard a voice and that voice spoke to me and it says, heal them. You see, like many of you have slept and seen yourselves in crusade grounds. Many of you have slept and seen yourselves healing. But don't let it die as a dream. It is destiny calling on you. It is a mantle revolving around you and saying, when will you respond? You think God has the time to waste those kinds of dreams? Why do you think it keeps coming? Man of God, don't be celebrating mundane things. Whereas there are superior demands in the spirit. You go to bed and there you see someone on a wheelchair watching you. And then you try to pray for the person. I will never forget many years ago. I went to pray for someone in Zaria then. And I sincerely, they gathered as a family. The person had a problem with the back and was, you know, grounded on a wheelchair. And they came believing. They had heard of the little that God was doing. And they truly believed. Suspended everything because I was coming to their house. So you could not say they did not have faith. What then is faith? They believed. And I preached a very sound message. You could make a series out of that message. Powerful message like many of us keep doing. And then when I was done, when it was now time to give witness to the resurrection, 
I was there and I believed well I don't know now but I believed that I had faith except that I stood before that crippled person and I said in the name of Jesus with every ounce of faith in me and absolutely nothing happened not many people will be honest to tell you this as men of God we like sounding as if everybody mm -mm. I felt so bad that day how could I preach so much imagine the miracle imagine such a powerful sermon sound exegesis of healing now the moment had come to give witness does it look like what is still happening today in many of our circles when it has to do with teaching what God can do we have done well he can heal when it has to do with singing it, my goodness. When it has to do with acting drama of healing. You know, youth groups and teenage groups in churches act drama so beautifully. You would see how Jesus resurrected and how Satan is falling up and down. Except that unfortunately that is acting for many people. When the sick become healed. When the oppressed become delivered when we make isaiah 61 come alive again ladies and gentlemen there will be a wave of civilization that the church will reintroduce i hope you know it is results that define civilizations i give you an instance it was the discovery of the internet that literally brought another kind of civilization now electric cars are coming is that true yes now virtual reality and all kinds of things the metaverse con uh, concept internet of things all of this advancement in technology they are literally civilization does not just happen it's a man's courage backed up by his intention an individual can get up like one person got up introduced the internet and now most of our children and teenagers do not even know what a typewriter looks like you see little children and all they know is to flip they don't know how to punch they don't know what keypads look like that is how believers can reintroduce a civilization that a day will come when many people will run and say come let us go to the house of the lord does that look like a scripture you have read that it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the lord's house shall be exalted above every other mountain listen it's more than prosperity talk this is beyond money we're talking of intangible things that money cannot buy like the power of God he said the money perish with you for you think you can buy the gift of God do you know how many people can carry their life's earning literally their life's earning they diagnose someone and say we need 20 30 million and that man has saved all his money representing all his labor and in one year it disappears and it's not like there is a guarantee for healing and while that is happening sadly and respectfully we men of god i come back to us again we're here jumping and bragging on stage whereas there are people dying and you see the real referee is not us the real referee are the unbelievers the unbelievers are the umpire they compare what we are saying versus what is producing from our lives and they say no this does not add up but the good news is that this will be one Easter that will be with a difference because for you your assignment tonight is not only to celebrate the ceremony of Easter but to know that there is a mantle that is looking for you there is a mandate crying for your destiny to become a validator god is depending on your witness the world has it, have a right to say we lied do you know that when jesus resurrected remember one of the synoptic accounts when they discovered that he was alive the bible says they paid people and they said please make sure you say he's not alive satan is still paying people today paying systems and structures to say jesus is not alive but our assignment is not just to sing up from the grave our assignment is not just to celebrate the ceremony i'm yours jesus i'm yours forever 
am yours Jesus I am yours forevermore Whoever you want to heal Lord you can heal through me Whoever you want to lift Lord you can lift In the next two minutes, I want us to pray. Wherever you are, let this be your Easter gift to your destiny. I want you to cry to the God of heaven and say the grace component that makes to be a validator of your resurrection, I obtain. Someone open your mouth and pray. Shalenda breska veretos kapari katos jevrendes kemash embra kata pakata baratos kepele katos yata the grace the grace to give evidence to the resurrection the grace someone pray someone pray Father I am available let it fall like it was in the day of Pentecost upon my life upon my singing ministry upon the word ministry you have given me upon my business let me become a validator of your resurrection not just a celebrator of your resurrection Pray one minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, our time is gone. Let me say this one time and then I'll just speak over those who are trusting God. We have to do this at least to honor the resurrection of Jesus. Let me repeat the last statement that I made that our mandate is not complete if we only celebrate the resurrection the greater task is to be validators of his resurrection by revealing the kingdom the power the glory of this jesus apostle peter on the day of pentecost while he was preaching the first sermon after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, he said, this same Jesus that you have been crucified, that you crucified, has now been exalted as Lord and Christ. The Bible says when they heard, they were caught to the heart. And they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? He said, repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive of this spirit. He says, for the promise is unto you and to your children, your children's children, as many as are far off even as the Lord shall call. Let me take a minute out of our limited time already to just speak over those who are trusting God for a miracle. In one minute, I'd like you to lay your hands where you are trusting God for healing or your hand on your chest if you are standing for someone or trusting God for any kind of miracle. Let me just speak over your life to honor this day. in the name of Jesus I decree and declare right now every devil of darkness that has plagued anyone watching by television watching by the internet from our zaria family our global family all the overflows down to this auditorium in the name of jesus christ and by the power that raised christ from the dead i command that spirit to give way now i decree and declare every sickness heart conditions be healed now. 
cancer be healed now HIV be healed now kidney conditions lung conditions be healed now blood related conditions be healed now eye conditions be healed now ear conditions be healed now everyone here who has been bound by any spirit I lose you now I lose your family now I lose every member of your family now anyone here and those watching who has been appointed unto death in the name of Jesus Christ we declare the fullness of your days you fulfill And anyone here who is particularly in ministry serving the purposes of the kingdom from tonight I forbid you from being barren as you communicate the gospel in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ with great power you will bear witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ genotypes every negative genotype be changed right now in Jesus name barrenness be healed now hepatitis be healed now pile be healed now peptic ulcer be healed now bone related conditions be healed now who are watching from any hospital or any point where you have a patient let the power of God on this resurrection day move through the airwaves and touch that person right now in the name of Jesus Christ now let me pray for you for all of you who are here from today I stand in the name of Jesus and I empower your hands I release you as proof producers I release you as miracle workers I release you as signs and wonders in ministry in business in career receive it in the name of Jesus Christ listen from today you will no longer wait until you come for koinonia become an extension of these possibilities in the name of Jesus Christ listen let me challenge you when you go back home go and meet those who are sick and take a step of faith and lay your hands on them don't say I cannot do it lay your hands if your loved ones tell you just remember I have been raised up with Christ just remember the Spirit of God lives in me that the resurrected King has resurrected everything in me I am in every way supernatural when someone tells you I am going through something don't just say meet apostle don't just say come for koinonia beyond that take a step of faith you are an ambassador a validator a witness carry this mentality today hallelujah and as you do that in the name of Jesus may the Lord use you to rewrite the history of the lives of men many people are working and they are trusting God for breakthrough and remember the strange thing about finance do you know why listen I'm not talking about money we're going to pray shortly do you know why many believers are poor because in the kingdom finance is warfare money is not just an instrument to live well it's a weapon see listen oh dear what's it ecclesiastes 7 let me just talk a little you was uh i, I didn't plan to say this but ecclesiastes 7 verse 12 let me show you something may god give somebody deliverance right now read it read it one to read for wisdom is a defense uh-huh and money is a defense just stop there 
so we know from the word that both wisdom and money is a defense now look up when the bible says you have a weapon what is a weapon something you use to both defend yourself and you can use also for attack is that true if you give me a weapon like a shield i use it for defense and the bible says one of the many weapons money is one of them and the bible says those weapons are not carnal the word not carnal means they are not man-made but my brother my sister this thing is man-made it was made by cbn that means this is not what god is talking about because this is man-made but the bible says this weapon that he calls money is not carnal he said it is mighty through god that means there is a spirit are you getting what i'm saying that means this thing is only the body the same way a human being is called currency anything that moves is a living thing and that means there is a spirit inside the body to move it you are only seeing the body where is the spirit that moves it that's why it can enter a house you didn't ask it to go and it will go out by itself it can enter your account and still go out because it's warfare the bible says, believe is prophets there is something they can do that can do something to the many things including this this is what we chase all around because we think this is paper no this is not this is paper yes but there is a spirit behind it and this thing respects that spirit this is what you need to understand so the spirit can instruct it to leave you and it can leave no matter how hard working you are you can receive salary and all you have is part of this left and it can be instructed to leave you it will, you know it's going it's going out of your life it just touches your hand and disappears because the weapons prosperity is warfare it's not just about money to buy car and houses money is a defense it can defend the gospel it can defend a man and the bible says all those weapons they are not carnal So if you ever see this looking for anybody, Naira does not look for men. Something makes it come. I, please, are you getting what I'm saying? If you can understand this alone, at least even if you don't know how it comes, you already know that it doesn't come by itself. These are the mysteries that surround our kingdom. You ever see anybody prosperous in the kingdom? My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. This is a spiritual realm. You don't have to be a Christian to believe it. You just have to be alive. This is a spiritual realm. Animals know it. Plants know it's a spiritual realm. That's why you throw a seed in the ground and you cover it. You don't leave it open. You cover it. Because what happens there is none of your business. Now you just cover it and watch it happen. And it grows to become a tree that you cannot push down. A little seed. When you planted it, it had no roots. The Bible says, just like you do not know the way of the wind, nor how a woman, how a child is formed in the womb of her that is with child, you know, and all of that, so also you don't know the way of God. The Lord brought you here tonight because there are spiritual possibilities, listen, that are beyond the realm of the eyes. Are we together most times we believe only what we can see and understand and explain unfortunately in this kingdom there are things that you may not be able to explain when people come here to testify you see me sit quietly and I watch and many times I'm in shock as I watch the immutability of God's power in the lives of people the same way you are going to come up here to testify yes it's true 
what suddenly happens to you and then you have someone just call you and say we are sending you to us to get a job Hapa, my brothers and my sisters i've told you again and again that everybody who helps you has relatives too who i need whatever makes you to leave them and come to you is not normal that you're sitting and someone says i'm thinking of you who do you think you are no i want to help you i want to bless you you step into prepared blessings blessings that you are as sure he said master we have toiled all night and jesus looked at them you know how to fish by waiting in the night and allowing the fish to come and rest on your net then you quickly pull it in the morning that's how you were trained but let me show you another technology cast your net to the right side master but we only have left and right <clears throat> this one is not brain work now this one is not one plus one i told you one plus one plus god is equal to whatever he says the answer should be one plus one is two but one plus one plus god is not equal to two it's not even equal to ten thousand is equal to any answer that god puts there so one plus one can be equal infinity god said so are we together now i'm saying this to build your faith tonight so that you will believe that god is able to do anything at all when you look at the way you got to hear about this ministry and the various ways the holy spirit worked with you till you came today you should know already that there is a god in heaven are we together now brothers and sisters i present to you this same god who can change your life who will change your life i'm saying this so that you don't just sit down and be clapping for others wow this is how god has changed this lady's life wow we are soon going to pray you must have a desperation and say lord i didn't come tonight to clap for anybody i left my journey wherever lord i know that you will visit me and i hold on to the horns of the altar while you are sitting the devil is telling you remember tomorrow by 12 your rent or embarrassment say satan go away and before the presence of god tomorrow is too far god can how many minutes does it take to do a transfer i believe him yes i do i believe him i believe him i believe him i believe he can change my life in one minute i want you to just mention everything you are trusting god to do tonight go ahead Lord, I believe you for this. I believe you for that. Those outside, whether you are standing by the wall, whether you are standing in any of the overflows, and those following online, release your faith. Don't be distracted. Any spirit that distracts you in this moment now is of the devil. It's a Luciferian spirit. Let your spirit and let your attention be open. Yes, Lord, I believe you. Mention it. Don't say it's too big. That's the devil. Too big compared to what? Pray, believers. Lord, I know you are able. You are able to take away this reproach from this family. Talk to Jesus. Even if you find yourself crying, just continue to speak. Lord, you are able. Change this situation. Turn my academics around. Lord, turn my finances around. Lord, I'm in a situation right now where only you, the God of heaven, can arise. Turn my ministry around. Lord, I'm confused. I don't even know where to go right now. I don't know whether to go to the left or to the right, but I receive grace. Pray. Are you praying? Kill on belief as you are praying. Don't let the devil tell you you are wasting your time. 
God of heaven. Keep praying. It says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and by supplication with thanksgiving it says make your request known don't assume it is known make your request known lord i'm here tonight because i want you to turn the situation of my family around lord there is a death sentence over my family and you have to arise for me tonight lord there is a death sentence over my life lord i've been delayed 10 years of my life I am backward 10 years. There has to be a way you restore me, oh God. Lord, I'm trusting you for the fruit of the womb. The gentleman who came here, seven children lost, including twins. Lord, I'm trusting you to refire my spiritual life. Something has happened to the anointing upon my life. Something has happened to the glory upon my destiny. I'm here tonight, oh God, turn my life around. Turn my life around. Something has happened. The signs and wonders are no more like before. The revelation and the grace and the utterance is not like before. I'm here for a turnaround, oh God. My prayer life has died. I'm here for a reawakening. I no longer fast. I no longer pray. I don't know what has happened to me. I cry for help. Hallelujah. One more prayer point. Lord, I believe you and I believe your servant. I believe that anointing and I believe in its ability to turn my life around. Walk on any unbelief in my heart, oh God, and take it out tonight. Go ahead and pray. Every spirit of doubt, every spirit of fear, Isaiah 61 please participate in everything we are doing it's going to be a very fast one but let your spirit be open the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord the same Lord that you are instructed to believe hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he hath sent me to bind up the broken hearted now listen this is why he anointed me because there is an agenda but that that agenda cannot be achieved just by a well-meaning heart it takes more than sincerity to bind up a broken heart to proclaim liberty now i like this one to proclaim to declare that the time has come for you to walk free it says and the opening of prison my brothers and my sisters there can be men physically walking but they are in prison next verse Verse 2. 
to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those who mourn. It takes more than a handkerchief to comfort men. It takes the anointing. Verse 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Now this is the part I like. To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. Hallelujah. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified so the end of it is for God to be glorified but not in the current state no so anything in your family make sure you carry your family along in this miracle service don't just stand alone to receive I've told you if you are blessed and your family members are not blessed, you are not free. You are not free at all. If you are the only one who is alive and everybody is just dying like a chicken, you are still not free. Are we together now? Thank you, Jesus Christ. Let me give us one last prayer point. Father, every desire I brought here tonight, I'm not walking back with it. Lift your voice and pray. Every. Let your faith rise as you pray. Shalakata barakatosh. Talato shabra hasikete malakata. Shakata kata barakata barate kete barakosh. Every desire. Visit me, O oh God, completely. The God who touches my spiritual life can touch my finances too. The God who touches my body can touch my womb too. Lord, I insist. I insist for completeness. comes upon your life right now then the Lord okay I want to pray a prayer now please be your brother's keeper whether you are inside or outside is because of what will happen when I pray the anointing will come and people will act out what I'm saying physically that's why I'm saying you should you should just hold them are we together now the Lord is asking me to release speed. Listen, speed is a very powerful thing. When that anointing comes, you will start running like Elijah. That's why I'm saying, hold them. Right now, I stretch my hands inside, outside, online, and I declare, Spirit of the living God, there are men and women here who have been delayed. 
and speed must come upon them right now i declare at the count of three one two three receive that grace i command speed speed right now speed let the hand of god come upon you the bible says the hand of the lord was upon elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of ahab down to israel i command speed receive it is coming on you now some of this coming on you for the sake of your family it's not just you alone it's coming on you for the sake of your family let the chains be broken i release speed speed in one month in one month i'm prophesying that in one month what has not been done in five years in one month receive that grace i energize your spirit man speed when speed comes upon a family you will see it in the result when speed comes upon your spiritual life when speed comes upon your academics i'm praying again the angels that ride upon the chariots are bringing you speed i release that grace let that anointing come upon you speed speed in the name of jesus christ speed now now listen fire in the spirit has many significance fire this fire is a mystery it was a reality borrowed from the realm of the spirit that we use here fire does not run away from any element fire is the only thing that all other elements must fit whether you put metal the metal will be hot wood will be burnt rubber will be melted there is nothing that stands fire other things can stand water but not fire are we together now he said he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire when the holy spirit listen is moving to break chains he moves as fire do you know why because fire destroys every other thing yet it is not destroyed it is not solid it is not liquid are we together it looks like gas but it's there you are seeing it you can't hold it you can't cage fire you can't lock it off it's not restrained by anything the holy ghost is going to move right now in this place as fire listen this fire i want you to bring those people out this fire you see will bring an end now believe me when i tell you this will bring an end to many captivities many captivities at the count of three i just want you to shout with me that word fire that word fire and many of you will be surprised in the name of jesus where sam there's a song in my spirit when we sing that song what's the name of that song blow 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 like a mighty wind am i correct you know what i'm talking about so you sing that song by the time we pray in the name of jesus i'm stretching my hands right now spirit of the lord you seek to reveal yourself as fire that consuming fire no power and no spirit even spirits can be burnt by fire in the name of jesus i declare that any operation that is not of god at the count of three by the mystery of the holy ghost as fire let there be deliverance let there be refining let there be the breaking of chains are you ready now one two three bring them out fire the mystery of fire 
I declare any chain if there is anyone under the sound of my voice and any chain has held your destiny by the mystery of this fire I'm speaking by this apostolic and prophetic grace I decree and declare to the heavens at the count of three may that fire locate chains in this place now one two three chains be broken chains be broken Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Sing below, Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Hallelujah. Madam, please clear the way for me. This woman, tap this woman for me. One, two, and the other person, three. Please come. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. You are welcome. Your first time here? I came here last week. Okay, you were here last week and you too. Um, is, this the, is this the mama I asked to come? I think it's someone else I saw, but when you are here, we'll honor you. But I want to pray for you. Madam, look at me. I'm seeing witchcraft in your life and your family. Where are you coming from? Mama? Where are you coming from? You are coming from Abuja. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, man. Look at me. I know you believe in the power of God. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring to end every oppression of darkness. Mama, I decree and declare, in one month, your life will turn around it to surprise you. In one month. In the name of Jesus Christ, where is that man that came from my Duguri? The one who came to give a testimony. Mama, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying I should tell you that the oppression is over. Look, I'm seeing fire. It's leaving my hands and it's coming upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, where is that man? We have to hurry up. There's, there's a lot to do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I decree and declare over your life. That fire. The Lord, it looks like you are an elderly woman, but the Lord is going to use you mightily. What you are receiving now is not just a miracle yet. You are receiving an impartation. You will begin to know the Holy Spirit in a very intimate way. Hold my hand. 
Spirit of the living God, you seek to use this dear mother in the name of Jesus Christ. You will know the Holy Spirit in supernatural ways. His fire will come upon your life and he will use you in a very mighty way. In the name of Jesus, come. You are the man that came from Eduguri. What is this? My CV. Your CV. You are trusting God for a job. And who is this? Hold it. Do you believe that if I pray for you, you are returning with a job? You believe that? Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, I release the anointing upon you and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let there be that miracle. You go and return with your job, sir. Let me pray for you, man. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you and I declare that the oppression of darkness comes to an end. A complete end over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray right now, but let me just... Um, the Lord is showing me, oh dear, sometimes this time, time, time just affects you. But I'm praying right now and I'm seeing letters and I'm seeing on the letter congratulations. Listen, and I'm seeing that this is a symbolism of breakthrough. Listen, let me tell you, except God is not God. If this anointing that I'm seeing touches you, then you and your family must stand here and testify. I'm stretching my hands right now. Lord, you are showing me this. In the name of Jesus, this is a symbol of breakthrough. I stretch my hands. Every family and every person that must receive of this grace, I'm stretching my hands now. You must testify. I release upon you that grace you must testify I declare whatever it will translate to whether a job whether increase whether promotion I command it I declare it I decree it. in the name of Jesus I command it I decree it I declare it right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ hold the hands of this lady this one hold the hands of this lady in the name of Jesus Christ I stretch my hands right now and I declare it's time for your family to rise I'm speaking it by the spirit of prophecy and I decree and declare every embargo that holds on to that family I command that is gone now in the name of Jesus it is gone I curse the power of witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ stretch your hands towards me your hand is a symbol of your productivity and there are many of you there is no grace on the works of your hands I look and in the spirit I don't see the blessing of the Lord working that's what is responsible for hardship it's not like you are not employed or you are not doing this but in the name of Jesus I stand representing the Spirit of God and I stretch my hands back to you I'm declaring still that ministry of fire many of you will be surprised whatever it is you are involved in God is about to bring grace upon it I stretch my hands right now at the count of three may the fire of God come through your hands into your life Lord I pray in the name of Jesus, whatever has not been working in your life, I force it to work right now. Receive that anointing. I force it to work now. Inside, outside, I force it to work now. Those following online, I pray and I speak whatever it is that you are doing. I declare the blessing. I activate the blessing upon the work of your hand. I take away hardship from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I take away hardship from your life in the name of Jesus Christ.
Yabone nakawo Sujata ne nakawo Sarki salama Sarki aljana Yabone nakawo The Lord is opening the eyes of people into where your blessing is. I'm seeing fire. Still this fire thing coming on the eyes of people physically. You will feel fire burning and ideas. The Lord is birthing things. It's, it's a birthing in the spirit. I release that grace right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, all those who must see, show them, oh God, where their blessings are stationed so that they stop dilly-dallying around life. I decree and declare, receive that grace, the grace of an open eye, the grace of an open vision. May the Lord show you where the resources of your destiny is. May the Lord show you where your helpers are. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This, the prayer is for everybody, eh? But this particular prayer now is for ladies. The Lord is showing me destinies that must be changed. Outwardly, you are beautiful, you are good looking, you are virtuous, you are wonderful. But in the realm of the spirit, it's not what we are seeing physically that we are seeing in the, in the realm of the spirit. A man with an ugly situation sat down at a gate called beautiful. The gate was beautiful, but the man's life was nonsense. There are many people you can stand. I'm, I'm saying everybody, but this is ex specifically for our sisters. And it's not just the issue of marriage. I'm not talking about marriage alone. That there is a fragrance, a presence that can ooze from you and bring favor to your life. But many of you physically, they look at you and you look like you are beautiful, you are this, you are that. But in the realm of the spirit, there are powers sitting on people's destiny. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. I want to pray for you. That, that force, that veil must be torn. In the name of Jesus, ah, I'm seeing a strange grace that is coming on many people, especially our sisters. I declare any wrong identity that you are given in the realm of the spirit that is not a reflection of your true identity, any exchange that has been made in the realm of the spirit so that physically you should be blessed but in the realm of the spirit you are carrying another person's destiny right now by the fire of the holy ghost sisters may that anointing come upon you now may that grace come upon you now i declare anyone's destiny here that has been changed and switched and manipulated in the realm of the spirit so that what you look like is not a reflection of what your destiny is i change it now in the name of jesus i change it now in the name of jesus listen a man's destiny can be exchanged it's true have you not read in the Bible where kings slaughtered their children to prolong their own lives? A man's destiny can be a shadow of something else. You know you are alive, but this is not your life. You know that you are living another person's script. I'm saying it again. In the name that is above all names. Sir, come.
I don't know you, but I want to pray for you, sir. God is going to turn your life around. And you see this prayer that I'm saying generally, this prayer, sir, is for you. You are a shadow of your life. Of your is your dad. Where did he come from? From high there. From where? From high there. Daddy, I'm going to pray for you. This is not just about your leg. Huh? This is about your destiny. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands up. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare. In the name of Jesus, anyone who has exchanged your destiny, sir, I decree and declare restoration now. You are the daughter, hold my hands, I pray for you. Look at me. You are a wonderful lady, huh? But bad things continue to happen in your life. Huh? You are a nice lady. Are you married? I'm married with that person. Don't worry. I know why I'm saying. You get what I'm saying now? Yes, sir. Because what I'm seeing, this is a spirit. You are a nice lady, but people continue to misunderstand you. Yes, sir. Yes, Good sir. things and people look at you. In the eye of many people now, you are, you are a devil. You are a terrible lady, yes, but it's sir. not true. Yes. You have a very beautiful heart. This is what happens when... Do you know that there are spirits that make sure you are misrepresented in the eyes of people? A ministry can be under this captivity. No matter... The Bible said, don't let your good be evil spoken of. You can be nice to somebody like it's happening to many of you. And people end up fighting you. You bought something for them. And they end up, you are saying, what is this? I pray for you and the person says, so you are trying to say I'm the one who is not spiritual. It's a spirit. My dear, I want to pray for you. Eh? This thing is not just about your marriage that is, you know, things have gone wrong. You are a wonderful lady. Eh? Favor will come close to you, but then never enter your life. Yes, sir. What yes, do sir. you do? I'm working in a security. Uh, you are a security? Yes, sir. Did you go to school? Yes, sir. My you are running your masters. Yes, sir. My dear, do you believe God can change your life yes, now? Yes, sir. I believe, sir. Hold my hands. To appoint unto them. You see that? To appoint. This one is a prophet's reward. It's not just that God is saying, do this. There is something in the spirit called a prophet's reward. The possibilities that accompany an office, I declare in the name of the God of heaven whom I represent, may your life change this night in a way that will surprise you. Listen, I lift you from this security work you are doing and I put you in a position that befits your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, Daddy sir, I'm praying for your daughter in your presence. This lady will come here and give a testimony that even you as a father who said this one is the lord's doing are we together now i declare it i decree it done right now hear me i don't care whether you are working or not if you are not in the rightful place as ordained by god i want to pray a very serious prayer because there are people the work you are doing is a nonsense work that work is it has robbed your spiritual life it has destroyed your relationship because of that work, no man can see you to marry you. Demonic work that closes you everywhere. I decree and declare. I stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace. If you are in a place that is not your assigned place of destiny, I take you out of that place and I shift you to the place of destiny. I shift you. I shift you in the spirit. I shift you by prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, if the widow of Zarephath was not where the prophet met her, that's how her miracle would have gone. It matters that you are in the right place at the time God sends your miracle. Some of these things in the name of employment, they are traps of the devil. I'm not saying it's not good to work, don't get me wrong. But many of them are traps from the peace of hell. 
there are people whose spiritual lives have gone down from heaven to earth simply in the name of job are we together nonsense job that on sunday you're on your way going to church your boss calls you and says you must come and resume what shall it profit a man if you gain the what is it is that the whole world how much is the salary lose your soul for peanuts i declare again in the name of jesus may my god relocate someone here by the power of the holy spirit may my god relocate a destiny relocate a family if you are not in your assigned place i shift you tonight in the name of jesus Christ. Do you know, listen, we're going to pray for the sick shortly. There are people that if the devil wants to destroy them, he will make sure they get visa. Ah, Pastor Jay, it's good to see you. There are people that if the devil wants to destroy them, they will get visa to UK. They think it's breakthrough, but they have gone away from their place of destiny. God spoke to Jonah, go to Nineveh. Jonah entered a boat on his way to Tarsus. And because of that wrong journey, people lost their properties. People lost. He entered a boat and made people to start destroying their lives. They were almost dying because a man was not in sync with seasons. Let me tell you this. It matters that God meets you at the place where your blessing is waiting for you. The devil can relocate people and, and destroy your life. There are many Nigerians outside this country whose destiny is ordained by God to be in this country. You see them roaming around like armed robbers around the world in the name of abroad. And there are others whose destinies are abroad and the devil will make sure that he will peg them somewhere. And Isaac sowed in that land. It's not just that he sowed. The place he sowed matters. Isaac sowed in that land. Abraham, take now thy son and go. Go to a location. That's where I will meet with you. God is everywhere. But destiny does not meet with men everywhere. You must have the discernment to understand your season of visitation. I repeat this. You see me speaking like this. I'm speaking by the Spirit. There are some of you, it's an instruction from God to you. Don't be careless about your life. Look at how many Nigerians. You go to embassies and see Nigerians. They want to go abroad by fire, by force. Ask them why. They will say greener pastures. I've told you, greener pastures is not in any physical location on earth. Greener pastures is in the world. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything? Not when you went. Jesus instructed them and said, Do not go. Go only to the lost tribe of Israel. Don't go outside that camp. Because salvation was for the Jews first. If they went to the Gentiles, they would have received a root shock. Direction. Direction. Please, in one minute before we pray for the sick, lift your voice and say, Lord, direct me. He said, The Lord is my shepherd. Direct me. There is a way that cement right unto a man, unto a woman, unto a family. Direction. Your blessing is not just generically in US or UK. There are people suffering in every nation. It takes the leadership of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, two things we are going to do very quickly. And I know you have been doing this, but please, I want to plead with you to do it with understanding. Most times we do things in this kingdom without understanding. That's why we are not blessed. Are we together? We are going to pray for the sick now. Don't walk out here if you expect to walk back the same way come here convincing knowing that god is going to touch you 
And while we are doing that, um, your prayer, if you don't have your prayer request, please write it quickly. Write it quickly. And in case your faith, you came here with a faith that is weak, you did write some vital things, you can add it quickly. Those online, you can send, you can send your prayer request very quickly. Now, we are going to do this very fast because our time is gone. Thank God Pastor Jakes is here. Are we together? Now, overflow. Listen, let's not be rowdy. Overflow one outside will walk to your projector stand. Overflow two, you also walk to your projector stand. Overflow three, walk to your projector stand. Those who are in here, you are trusting God to touch you, to touch your family members. You can make your way and come and stand orderly in front here now. Please, quickly, quickly. Let's do that very quickly. While we are doing that, please, if you have written your prayer request, I want you to wave it and ushers, you may find a way of splitting yourself very quickly. Let's, let's have ushers. If the ushers are not enough PR department, you can join them and then let's make it very fast. Make sure everyone's request um, is obtained, please. For those online, I want you to believe by faith. If you are still here to write, just write it. Ushers, please. There are hands all around. Let's help out. Protocol can also help so that we'll make sure that everyone's request. If it's a text on your phone and you don't have the opportunity to write it down while I'm praying, you can just connect with it. It's not just a ritual. Believe in what we're doing. the name of Jesus we stand by this corporate grace and this corporate anointing Pastor Jakes Ejimi there um, Pastor Alpha Benga overflow one Pastor Femi promise overflow two please quickly quickly let's go there and let's trust God to touch the people God has anointed this ministry and he has given us the grace to be the extension of the hand of Jesus over your life. And I want you to agree. I want you to believe. The worship team will lead us in a moment of praise and worship while we pray. And please listen. Except the people are prophesying to you or they are talking to you. Just a touch. I want you to believe by faith. Are we together? You don't have to start giving them an explanation. This is why I'm here. Don't worry. Just connect by faith. If there is a word for you, the word will be given to you. Otherwise, just believe by faith. Father, we thank you. You call this place Koinonia and this meeting a miracle service. Lord, we pray for those online and those within. We decree and declare. Let there be a free flow of the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Lord, let this touch not just be the touch of men. Let it be the touch of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let every one of these people come and testify here. In the name of Jesus. Now, those of you who, when you submit your prayer request, don't just be staring. This is not a cinema. You should be praying. Are we together? Because shortly after this, I will pray on this and I will speak over our lives. Prophecy is very powerful. So whilst you are standing there, whether you are, you know, up here or down, you should be prayerful, spiritualize your mentality. Now is not the time to laugh around and be talking carelessly. Let your spirit be alive. Hallelujah. God bless you. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be healed right now.
such Jesus in this place in this place fire is burning incense is rising heaven touches earth in this place in this place sing heaven touching earth
Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. And that's what my song will be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. 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 Come on, say, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That's all I have to say. 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 Hallelujah! Hallelujah! song will be and that's what my song will be hallelujah that's what my song will be that's what my song will be that's what my song will be Kado. Just do it as soon as we're done. There are people waving their request there. So while the worship team is leading us, please make sure that, make sure that you are in the spirit of worship and not making sure your heart is connected. So Alpha and Omega, we worship your name. Yeah, we worship your name. 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 We worship your holy 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 name. Just pray in the spirit in one minute. Those following from any nation of the world, I'd like you to just pray. We're just going to pray and speak over this. Go ahead. Stretch your hands. We're praying on this request. Shalabakaruta sabredigedegata baladaba. Nataka parakato shadabredigedebeledebos. Father, let your people return with testimonies. In the cross, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let impossible situations be turned around by the Spirit of God. 
Lekato shata pradega to sa pradega deba. Rakata parata parato sa de pradega deba la daba. Arato se kele monta shin daba. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Lord, it is before you. These prayers are laid out. Father, we give you praise. Thank you because whatsoever we ask in your name, that you will do. Thank you for prayers. Thank you for answers. Thank you for praises. Thank you for testimonies that are bound. Father, we give you praise for there is nothing impossible with you. We give you glory because we know situations that have stood hitherto unbeatable. Lord, you will bend things tonight in the name of Jesus. You will change things tonight in the name of Jesus. You will bring breakthroughs by the power of your spirit. You bring healings. You bring deliverance. You will bring breakthrough, financial breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. You bring changes, Lord, deaths, supernatural deaths will be canceled by the power of your spirit. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. Father, we thank you. Thank you for angels, the release of angels. Angels on assignment Amen. Angels bringing solutions and answers to prayers. Father, we give you praise because many will stand before you to give testimony and give glory to your name. For in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It has been declared in the name of Jesus every request here. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, we turn it into testimonies. And let some of them begin to manifest from this night in the name of Jesus Christ let it be by the grace of God that by this time next month you will you will almost not have any requests to write in the name of Jesus Christ our time is gone but I want you to lift your hands I want to speak over your life now apostle why do we do this all the time because this is how you program the destinies of people these words you see they are not just languages it's not just the speaking you know i never cease to be amazed at how people's lives change overnight just because a word the bible says he sent a word to jacob not he spoke he sent a word to jacob and it lighted upon israel hallelujah and he blessed them saying and he blessed them not thinking saying in the name of jesus i decree and i declare that this month of september you are entering let it be called your season of strange results let it be called your season of strange results <laughs> anyone who has despised the grace of God upon your life in the name of Jesus may God use your life to prove a point I decree and declare over your spiritual life a new vista of insight and access into the mysteries of the spirit I release it upon you right now if you are a man of God here, I pray, may your ministry shift to a new dimension. If you are a woman of God here, I pray, may your ministry enter a new dimension of power. I declare that someone here, may you encounter the power of God. Raw, the raw power of God the same way God comes to man may his power come to you may you know the mysteries of the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life this is a family of great favor I declare if this grace is not yet speaking in your life I declare by the hand of God Almighty who brought that anointing upon my life and this house may favor practical favor begin to follow you from today in the name of Jesus Christ what you cannot do for yourself I ask my God to do it for you in this 
if you're a man of God here I prophesy to you that the next time you stand upon this altar to dispense the word of God may you see a dimension of the spirit through your life and your ministry that will surprise you I know that there are many of us that are trusting God for all kinds of financial breakthrough I've taught you the principles of finances but there is a prophetic dimension of wealth are we together now and in the name of Jesus I declare the same grace that carried a raven and it brought bread to Elijah I decree and declare may that same grace carry your blessings and locate you with it in this sea in the name of Jesus I pray for every family represented here in the name of Jesus and I say this from the depth of my heart enough is enough I prophesy it again enough is enough whatever represents setbacks in any family I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I command that an end comes to it this night every graduate here that is trusting God for a job you heard the testimony here in the name of Jesus Christ both where you applied and where you didn't apply may the angel of the Lord see to which that a miracle job locates you those who are in business here in the name of Jesus business is spiritual the grace that will cause your business to command strange results may that grace come upon you in the name of jesus christ if there is anyone here in any kind of trouble that needs the hand of god that means if god does not step in for you you know you are in trouble i stand by the gift of prophecy and i decree and declare over your life come out of that trouble now whether it's a financial trouble whether it's whatever come out of it now in the name of Jesus Christ every attack on your destiny I decree and declare from tonight by the assignment of angels we ward off that attack in Jesus name whoever has been destined by God to help you rise and either because of witchcraft or insensitivity in the spirit he has not been able to locate you in the name of Jesus I declare I call them by the spirit and I command that they locate you <laughs> believe in every prayer that we're praying we're entering the ember months and many people associate this month with all kinds of demonic activity minus you <laughs> I say it again minus you everyone who is part of this prophetic family and connected to this family I declare the mystery of exemption over you in the name of Jesus Christ that when men say there is a casting down I welcome you into the greatest months that you have to face for this year I decree and I declare over your life we're rounding up there are some of you nothing ever works in your life it's not like you are lazy it just doesn't work except it fails you to the point that even when you see success you are afraid of it because you know it will not last I declare not only will you be successful I command your results to last I say it again by the Spirit I command your results to last I forbid you from this experience of up today and down tomorrow in the name of Jesus Christ any door that was once open and is now closed I reopen it in Jesus name I hope you believe everything I'm saying 
please believe it with all your heart i pray for every student here i don't know what challenge you may be having or i don't know what you are trusting god for in the name of jesus i pray particularly for students that are supposed to have graduated and one thing or the other is keeping them i don't care what needs to be done let it be done to move you in the name of jesus christ i say it again let it be done to move you there are some of our young ones that just wrote post ume in the name of jesus there are some of you who the results you have seen now from that result you will not get anything serious i change that result now i change that result now i change that result now believe it you are too young to walk in unbelief i change that result now anyone assigned here program that you must die or that your loved ones as we enter this ember whether by accident as you are moving listen no i know our time is gone but i'm praying a very important prayer believers are careless and that's why sometimes we allow the devil to take advantage of us i declare whether by air or by land whether on bike kekena pep if it will crash you will never enter it I say it again if that vehicle is doomed for accident then I take you out of it but in the name of Jesus if you enter it then it must not crash I pray for your finances again that in the name of Jesus the worship team sang here and said Ebenezer there is a God that can help men I pray for you directly finance that's the prayer I'm praying for you now I know you love God already I'm not doubting your passion for God but the resources that it would take especially for you my dear brothers it takes a lot for a young man to be established and it's not a blessing if you are just going old and old and old and you have to beg for tea and bread every day in the name of Jesus the grace that helps men that can take a man from nowhere and establish him because you have believed the Lord I command your establishment now he said keep us lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil I pray for you any orchestration of evil a trap of Satan so that you will enter and it will destroy your life quarter to getting into that trap I declare in the name of Jesus may the Lord rescue you out of it two or three more prayers and we're done any friend in your life any useless association in your life that is not profiting you spiritually destiny wise financially I caught it from the realm of the spirit this night I ate out of your life in the name of Jesus let me tell you there is a saying show me your friends and I will show you your destiny some of us love God but the demon in our life is the spirit that keeps bringing the worst of every kind of friend you are born again but the people that come to like you to want to marry you are people who don't love God or oh, you are a nice well-meaning brother but your friend is an arm robber your friend is a 419 your friend what any kind of wrong relationship whether you are aware or not in the name of Jesus I'm speaking to you let there be a separation right now and I pray for you if there is any deceiver in your life may my God expose them in this season. I know you don't like the prayer but let me pray for you 
if there is any deceiver in your life i say it again may the god of heaven expose them in this season. whatever has tampered with your love for god there is something called first love first love is fire fire for god fire for the house of god that they have to advise and encourage you now and say let us go he said i was glad not i was angry not i was dragging let me tell you if the passion for the house of god is dying in your life it's not a sign of spiritual growth it's a sign of an attack even if you think it's happening because you are a man of god that church they are not sharing anything that spirit is the spirit of the antichrist i declare fresh passion for the things of god fresh passion for the house of god you used to wake up in the morning and the first thing you think about is your bible but now you wake up the first thing is your phone the first thing is email the first thing is uh, what they call all those things social media all those things you are doing and before you know it you spend one hour there you say let me just do it for five minutes you wake up by three o'clock and you say i will study my bible but quickly you watch nigerian film all kinds of things in the name of jesus those things are not bad don't get me wrong but i don't care whatever it is if it is as taking the position of god i declare let it return back to his rightful position let me rebuke the spirit of laziness before we share the grace because let me tell you i have seen people as a man of god and as a leader i have seen people who will never become anything listen nigerians and especially we around here let's trust god for grace to be serious when a young man is snoring your way you are sleeping you watch movie till 1 a.m and then you sleep till 11 a.m you are signing poverty with your destiny both god and satan agree that laziness leads to suffering are we together there are many of us here i, I don't hate you you know i love you with all my heart but your deliverance needs to be laziness 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 i'm not as concerned about our sisters but this our brothers you are the ones i'm talking to Sister, that doesn't mean that sisters should be lazy because some of you god is even speaking to you through this reduce those movies reduce all those facebook thing and all of that and sit down gentlemen receive grace grace to stay awake when others are sleeping <laughs> believers are lazy people and we just imagine that just because we have the anointing things will happen just like that if you are a man here and you are a married man please hear me and you know you are not catering for your family i love you but i'm telling you the truth by the word of god you are not being responsible no matter what the excuse is receive grace tonight to sit down and find out what do i need to do to feed my family let no man believer here Born of God, you return back home and there's no food, and they are asking you, and you are acting as if that they have not paid school fees. Say, what will I do? Is he responsible? Is he responsible? Before you have a child, think and plan. What are we going to do with this child that is coming? Not just that you give birth and then you start inconveniencing people. In the name of Jesus, I declare the discipline to be diligent and the discipline to be responsible. I release it upon you now. Every entitlement mentality that makes you believe someone somewhere should walk and just come and give you free success. I cancel that wrong mentality now. hallelujah we speak peace over zaria we speak peace over kaduna state and we speak peace over this nation we decree and declare that whether it's in the political or the economic sphere we declare that christ must be glorified in this season in the name of jesus christ and for all of you who are doing one thing or the other whether job whether ministry whatever it is i declare multiplication of results in the name of jesus christ 
before we take the altar call i want to encourage you please listen please listen everyone next week friday next week we're going to have coin on on sunday is 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 our som graduation we'll announce that shortly but on friday please listen we're all waiting upon the lord we're fasting okay there's no koinonia so we're going to trust god please when we say wait upon the lord minimum minimum at least minimum four o'clock if you fast and end by 12 except you are a child or except you are on a serious medical this thing if if you are not on a medical program and you fast and end by 12 i think you are lazy to whom much is given much is required six hours alone is too small you have to be serious and if you fast and all you do is sleep god too will have to forgive you because you didn't maximize is this not the fast i have commanded there is a fast that is hunger starvation but there is a genuine fast listen to messages so friday please uh, media make sure you announce it friday we are fasting and we are fasting the goal listen carefully three things number one our spiritual health are we together number two we're interceding for this ministry we're speaking the next level we're declaring we're praying over this ministry are we together now beloved i don't want you to give up stay tuned and get connected keep listening keep being blessed by the mouth of the lord through his servant apostle joshua selma on this platform reflector hub tv don't forget the scripture speaking and the bible says god makes all things beautiful in his time this season you must know it is your time is your time to shine is your time to reign is your time to experience the freshness and the newness of the wine jesus serves is your time to encounter the lord afresh it's your time for salvation it's your time for deliverance the lord makes all things not some things beautiful in this time it is truly your time to experience and to come in contact with that healing power of the lord that you have so desired beautiful in this time it's your time to embrace a new walk with the lord it's your time to refreshing that relationship that has been looking like one-sided has been struggling it's your time to come alive in that business that all hope seems to have been lost don't forget the scripture said though a tree being cut down at the scent of water it will spring back to life it's your time because when the lord breath reaches everything you cast your hand upon to do it will truly come alive it will spring back no matter how long that situation must, must have been decaying no matter how long that situation or that obstacle might have been there no matter how long that condition or that circumstances has faced you or has posed truly a challenge to your life it's with great assurance that we bring to you the inevitable counsel of the lord the wonder working counsel of the lord that this is the time that god makes all things beautiful in your life no matter what you're passing through don't give up yet i hope you know the scripture in the book of job the bible said the question was asked to Job, i doubt the first man or was that found before the hills you are not the first but i can assure you that this will be an end to that challenge this will be an end to that situation this will be an end to that long years of weeping of sorrow this will be an end to that long terminal disease that has so afflicted your life the infirmities the infirmities that darkness has thrown upon your health and is choking your body is making you uncomfortable bringing so much inconvenience to your life this is the sad time because the hand of the lord coming upon it will make all things new and i tell you the previous story men have written about your life will definitely be raised because god is set to do new things but adventure you are a new viewer I would like you to subscribe to Reflector Hub TV YouTube channel. Ensure to stay tuned. Share this video to your friends, family, neighbors, loved ones, so as to also get them blessed and release this message of hope to them. Don't forget to hit the notification bell by the side of the subscribe button. And see you always in our next video. We love you so much and God bless you.